Oh. Oh, that was incredibly loud. Ladies and gentlemen, and if you identify as a thunderstorm, we got you too because it's one outside. And it's a storm brewing inside, baby. Not my house. Well, I mean, it's a storm brewing in my stomach. No, like no, no, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't. There's a you, you want to know how I know? Ah. Because some sick son of a bitch texted me before we even started this podcast and said they had handled a similar issue. Well, life is just constantly sleeping and shitting. What you want me to do? Another one's brewing. I want you to break the site, break the loop. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to break the loop, nigga. No, I'm Julian. I'm here to protect the loop. He said shitting, pooping. <laughs> <laughs> what else is there to life? Besides shitting and pooping, um, uh, let's see, love, um, but he said gay. Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, what else? Besides love, shit and pooping, food, probably, yeah. The part of shitting and pooping. Yeah, because no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, nah, you were shitting and pooping without the food, wouldn't you? Like, for a little while, not the whole time. If you never ate food ever in your life, you would never shit. Because you got no nutrients to break down. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to discuss this with a fee a fecologist. I don't I don't think that's a thing. You don't think that's what they're called? They probably have a much like less obvious name. And he's like, Oh yeah, I'm a you know, a sim 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 by sim by scientist. And you're like, Oh, okay, what's that? Oh, I just, I study steaming shits. Mm. There actually is a scientist that studies Shit. Shit. No, I know. It makes sense because it, you know, it has something to do with the gut microbiome. And yeah, no, I'm not mad at him for doing that. I don't know what, like, how do you know? Like, that, that's what I always ask, right? Like, you know how you see those videos on Twitter, right? And we always ask. Every single nigga on earth that studies shit, it's a fetish. Is it somewhere down the line? One of y'all niggas sue me. Somewhere down the line, he said, when did you know? <laughs> when did you know? But one thing I always wonder, right? Because you ever see like them videos of like artists, like I'm gonna throw six thousand marbles in the air, and it's gonna be a picture of like a uh, Meryl Streep, and you're just like, what? And you're I'm just like, how do y'all come to find right. out that you can do some shit like so that? So I always think to myself, obviously with art, it's like easier to like, how did you like? But then think about it, you are a shit specialist. How? What was the path in life? Like, you probably was like, I love science. That's great. That's dope. You got into science. And then where did shit come into the picture? Where did Dookie come into the picture? It was science, and then it was doctor, and then it was stomach doctor, and then it was intestinal doctor, and then at some mm. point, you just get desensitized. Yeah, and, and he started thinking of stuff. Like, well, so I should just get to the source. Doctors. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many intestinal doctors and stomach doctors. I bet you there ain't a lot of shit doctors, so I ain't gonna have no competition. You fuck mm -hmm. around with so many stomachs and intestines. He like, you got to understand. Dookie's so nasty, niggas don't even want to be there. So think about it. If I'm in the Dookie field, it ain't that many niggas out here. So it's so many. I got all the opportunities. When somebody be like, yeah, I got this big shit. Oh, I handle it. I'll handle it. I got name it. Your I got it. Name your price. I'll handle the shit. I got the gloves on me now. I can do it right now, bro. He like, nah, yeah, nah. It's crazy. It's... I learned that there were shitologists when I was a kid. <laughs> because <laughs> somebody, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. and. There was this episode. First off, it's two niggas that live in a one bedroom apartment and they share the bed. And oh, it's scatology. I mean, I, I would have figured that out. Oh, come on. That's or, so or, weird. or, corporality. Corp there we go. Coprology. Co how would I pronounce there that? There we Co go. Coprology? That's, yeah, that's the one. I like that. Scatologist is dookie. Okay, yeah, scatologist. That remind me of like, uh, what's that? I'm a scat man. <laughs> <laughs> My man, that shit. But um, I was watching this episode of Always Sunny, and these niggas were sharing a bed. And one of them niggas shit the bed hmm. one day. How do you shit the bed? I don't know. You just shit the Actually, bed. Actually, no, 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 no. I can't ask that question because I've almost shit a bed before. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, the worst part is it wasn't even like it. You can explain, like, you know how you almost hit the bed. You almost yeah, no, he fully doo dooed the bed and probably really... steeped in it. No, it was just one little dry turd rolled out his pant leg. Oh, uh, <laughs> Anyways, 
<laughs> it happened three days in a row. <laughs> Oh my god! No, I ain't no way. That's the course of the show, and they kept arguing back and forth about who was doing it, whose fault it was. So the whole group took it to a shitologist so they could fucking <laughs> prove by DNA whose it was. And they get to the root, and they said it was wolf hair in it. And they were like, "Okay, this has to narrow it down." And they both looked at each other like, "I mean, we both." And just a decent amount of wolf hair. I mean, that could go either way. <laughs> and, and everybody's just like, how the fuck do you just ingest wolf hair? And it just went from there. That's just how always sunny is. But yeah, I know since I was like 12, there was shit men out there. And it's funny because I always think about like stuff like this, right? Like, and it's funny because I remember reading an article way, way, way back, and then I think Vice did like a, a documentary or something on it on like a like shit transplants, like the fecal transplants or you know what i'm talking about yeah um and i remember them doing something like that and i was just sitting there thinking like okay so you're gonna empty someone's bowels and inject other shit and i'm just like wow wow this is fucking nuts okay cool keep going keep going like if there's there's certain things that like the instant i hear it i'm just like you guys are in the fucking future this is what science is all about studying shit this is what science is about Imagine a nigga with crippling Crohn's disease or some other yeah. stomach or intestinal disease, and then they get a nigga with perfect microbiomes. They take his dookie out and put his intestines, and then they just spread all around, and then that nigga got perfect microbiomes. That's just, see, that's what we're looking for. Right? We need to craft the, like, oh, I just thought about it. Yo, this is my new conspiracy, right? We looking to craft the perfect human, right? Because we want to just extract sales from him. So you got to get the perfect nigga right. So that way he could just be the, the root for everybody else. Like you get his micro, microbiome right. And then you I mean, could just, you know. So you say that and I think about just one nigga in the laboratory. Hooked up to a table. Missing like one arm and one leg. And like just shavings of skin. Missing off his body. Because he's the perfect man. So we just. He just regenerated back. Yeah, nigga Piccolo, nigga. They made him that way. When Piccolo ripped his arm off, this shit still hurt. Okay. I'm sure it probably still hurts. That's the that's see, that's where we get into the nefarious part of it. It's it, come on, it's the government. They have to be nefarious. Right. But yeah, no, I, to me, shit like this is no pun intended, but shit like this is like just to me, it's like well, this is what science is for. Like, I know it sounds weird. It's just like you're studying doo-doo. But it's like, I remember when I was doing research on, uh, like, autism and uh, gut health. And gut health and autism are very closely linked. Like, so there's a lot to gut health that we don't understand yet. And there's, like, and when I say they're closely linked, I mean, like, uh, symptoms. I'm not, you know, I don't think you can just improve gut health and it goes. But in terms of, like, the symptoms and some of the stuff that comes with autism, you can severely or, or uh, significantly impact that by addressing uh, gut health. So again, and, and that's for something where you're like, oh, autism? You, like, you wouldn't think autism would be the one that gut health would be like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, yeah, some of them are like mixed. Entirely brain related. Like you, or you would, yeah, exactly. You would think the gut health shit would affect the stuff that's like digestive and like gastrointestinal type stuff, because like it's all in the same system, right? So if I, if I improve your stomach, then your your your, your intestine and all that other shit that go in. So to me, it's just fascinating just to see what folks do with science, and I think this is the best part of science when you just see like random people just people do the the nutty shit, right? So it's kind of one of those things where when you see those stories of like, oh, these uh. These scientists found four rare birds and wanted to see if they fuck. Like, it all makes sense at some point. Like, it just might not fucking make sense when you see the, like, first one. You're just like, why are you trying to see how cardinals fuck? And you're like, just wait see? for it. That's wait why scientists it. be trying to see how eels fuck, because we don't know where the niggas come from. Fuck eels fucking. I want to see. see I'm, I'm trying to see a lot more than eels fucking. I'm trying to see who they masters are, who they do they bidding for. I know them niggas can talk. It's me. I, I, I know Eels can talk. Nigga ain't even got to, like, try to run that by me or nothing. I already know that's... Eels have strangely human eyes. Like, their pupil to iris ratio, it don't look like other fish. Oh, it's strangely human, huh? Almost as if there's a person trapped in there, huh? Like we addressed a couple episodes ago, huh? 
Yeah, y'all gotta y'all gotta listen like seven. Nah, seven, nah, seven. don't worry about it. Don't worry. We ain't saying shit. Nah, we ain't saying shit. Y'all stay stay y'all stay asleep. Don't worry about it. It's yeah, just eels, like, right? You don't become an eel. Yeah, it's just eels, right? Yeah, don't trip. I mean, but I yeah, want to be See, I always say that. Like, I always think to myself, like, like you know, how people are like, oh, it must be so easy to be a, a cat or a dog or something. You know, you ain't got to do nothing. You can just chill. You can just sit by by. Did the I'm just like, yeah, but like, it's probably hot. All and they also, yeah, and they have masters, my nigga. At the end of the day, I mean, like, dogs have masters, cats. Have masters. I, I know that's my whole point. All all pets whatever. have masters, nigga. I don't want no fucking master, bro. Like, Be a street cat. Yeah, but then that's even worse, nigga. You, that's like that's like living on the streets, nigga. What the fuck. <laughs> we know how living on the streets work. It, it's only two options: you either end up getting thirty cats pregnant, or you end up dead. I want to be a hagfish. A hagfish, man. You, do you know what a hagfish is? I know what hag means. It sounds like an ugly ass fish. A uh, hagfish is the fish that, ugly whenever fish. it's attacked by a predator, it releases mucus from its skin. And basically, it releases so much fucking cummy style mucus from its skin, it chokes the niggas that are trying to eat it and kills them. It, like if it's sharp. Tries to attack like he be smacking even... it releases oh so shit oh. it gets caught in their gills ah. and suffocates ah. yo is this peanut butter what the fuck and then you say yo why and oh shit boy. that is funny as hell that's also a pretty like you know what like and that's what i mean like that's the beauty of science right like it's like evolutionary shit where you look at it and you're just like bro what the fuck happened in y'all history over ten thousand years where they were like you know what slimy slime slimy Nah, nah, that, that's it though. Not like weapons, not no, slime. Hey, that's a weapon it. is a slime. They be killing niggas. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, technically. Yeah. If that slime getting a nigga gills is getting all gunked up, like imagine <laughs> you, imagine getting fucking super glue in your throat. You're not breathing. No, I know, that. I know. It's like it's like a, a heap of lard, nigga. Like, yeah, uh, that shit. It's got yep. the density of cum mixed with you. It's got the density of um, Hellman's mayonnaise on a knife. Oh. <laughs> they be dropping a lot, too. Like, they can fill up a 10-gallon tank in, like, five minutes. That's nuts. I don't know how, like, I don't know the science behind it. Like, how does it keep, like, I can understand, like, an octopus or a squid, they'll drop some ink. But they stop at a certain point. How do you fill up a 10-gallon tank? So I think uh, I don't have necessarily a ten gallon answer, but I remember reading this about um I was watching this thing. Did I tell you about this Mariana's Trench shit I was watching? Uh no, but I know Mariana's Trench is terrifying. Yeah, so I was watching this little documentary on the Mariana's Trench, uh, and it was talking about like a bunch of fish at the bottom. Uh and it mentioned a particular fish that basically um Obviously, the Mariana's Trench is so far down. I think it's like 35,000 feet or some silly shit. Like, it gets so uh, far down at a certain point where, like, the pressure is strong enough to, like, break anything with bones. So, like, any vertebrate would, would be crushed, which just had a spine compressed into dust, which I it was just pretty nuts to me. But, anywho, so they have fishes down there, though, mind you. And you're like, well, fish are vertebrae. Some of them are. So, how the fuck are they? And these niggas literally have this thing where they eat. And whatever they eat, uh, it interacts with like a, a, um, a, it's a chemical reaction that happens in their stomach. And then they produce like this, like almost like bile. And what happens is they spit the little bile out and then the bile covers themselves. And the bile becomes like an aluminum armor that keeps them, like their bones intact and keeps them safe from predators. I'm like, my nigga, this nigga literally ate some food. Like this nigga crafted inside his stomach. He said, hold on, I'm about to craft a level 20 armor. Let me get, uh, yeah, let me get that, the sea moss. You what put three fuck? items in. What yeah. you doing? Yeah, no, nah, that's, so that shit is nuts. That's What's why the I was. What's the point of that? I mean, I know the point is to keep them alive, but why they need to do that? Why are they down there when they can be anywhere else in the ocean? That's where he at, bro. He asked where he was. He asked where to be born. It's a living situation. You feel me? It, you know what's interesting? Afford- um, it's funny you else. bring up the Mariana's Trench and being on the bottom of the seafloor because I was watching something about giant octopi yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, a giant octopus can grow to be over 600 pounds 
and they don't have a single bone in their body. So a 600 pound creature can survive. 600 pound rag. <laughs> yeah. And it can survive being on the ocean floor where, like you said, you got bones. They're yeah, getting crushed getting to dust. Pressed. And them niggas just down there chilling. And something that is 600 pounds can also squeeze through a quarter sized opening. Mm-hmm. And they smart as shit, too. Yeah. Yeah, you know how many octopuses, octopi, octopuses? You know how many octopenium? Oct- you know how many uh, cephalopods escape aquariums every year? Mm-hmm. They're like getting out. They be they be busting out. I think I remember I read a story about um there was a, I think one of the zoos nearby where we are um there was like a a, a, a chimpanzee or it's a specific type of, of of ape. I can't think. It's like the the sagely looking one, like the the, the, the sagely looking. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it, the uh, exalted one. It, it literally, like it literally, he literally looks like that. I think it, it's not a chimp. What I saw, yeah, it was probably an orangutan. Um, but um, let me see. Yeah, no, it was 100 percent orangutan. But anywho, them niggas do look wise. Yeah, I was just saying it's the sagely nigga. Like I mean, now I'm sure it's probably chill. media but that informed us that way. But look, he says media like they got good publicity. You pull up to an orangutan in the wild and you ripping your arms. Nah, you know, door. nigga, it's chimpanzee propaganda. Yeah, chimpanzee is the niggas of the, the, the monkey kingdom, bro. They try to make chimps look like they just the silly ooh, ooh, no, I ass think niggas. Silverback gorillas. Are... No, because silverback gorillas are the street niggas of, of like, those are just street niggas. You could be a, a, a do a, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just street. They, yeah, they, silverback they, gorillas just pull up on you. Yeah, they know better than to fuck with them niggas. The orangutans, the niggas that went to college, and you know some of them niggas got you know internalized the uh, biases towards chimpanzees. It's fucked up that we're comparing black people to monkeys. Is it? I mean, we're black, so I mean, we get a pass. Say, yeah, it's I'm still. Like, yeah, I'm like, is it, nigga? That is the history of the world. Not no, mention, no, literally all of us descended from monkeys. So I mean, I, it, it, what are we talking about? That's yeah. I always hated when they call niggas monkeys. I'm like, well, how am I a monkey and you not? You dumbass. That don't make you, no sense. Your dark skin is closer to their fur. That's the only thing. I got. Oh, and I'll, I'll be like, all right, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Say ooh ooh. Fuck is you talking about? Like <laughs> everybody got a little bit of monkey in it because it do feel good to like. It just it feel kind of good. It's like bringing up memories from the chip. <laughs> He just high. The, the first cycle. That was a good time. The first cycle, yeah. Yeah, man. All right, so we have been uh, rambling here for a little while. You want to get to a topic? It's only two, so <laughs> so it's not, not not much. That was the most meaningful conversation I had all day. You call it rambling? I mean, I did compare niggas to monkeys, so I mean, I was meaningful to you. Racism is meaningful to you? Hmm. 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 Yeah, it's lighting you. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, okay. It's funny that you mentioned the dumbass word girl boss, because let's talk about men dating girl bosses, right? Well, not specifically. Uh, that'll just be in a, a, what's that word? Like when you call something that gets added to it, uh, it starts, it's a long ass word. What'd you say? You said in addition? No, no, no. It's a long ass word. Uh, it's like an app, a appendium or some shit like that. Um, appendum, appendix. Not uh, Remember, it don't matter. It the word don't even literally matter. But anyway, it's just gonna be a side note. But um, so obviously I've seen it. Uh, appendectomy. That's uh, yeah. That might be it. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, probably that's, it. Actually, that's, that's not it. I, I know it's not it. Nigga, my brother had one. Fuck <laughs> you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that nigga must have had appendicitis, huh? Yeah, that nigga did. Yeah, that nigga was howling at the moon. Yeah, shit like that. I hope I never get that. Well, I mean, think about it. It's like an organ that ain't doing shit in your body just becomes inflamed. And it's like, yo, my nigga, if you don't take me out, I'm taking everything with it. I'm taking everything with me. Yeah. And you just like, bro, we don't even use you. Why are you bugging? I don't know. All I know is I'm 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 flamed up, nigga. I'm charged up. So it's your fault. You did something to get me inflamed. Hey, now I'm hey, hot. Uh, hey, yeah. What you gonna do about it? <laughs> you say what you gonna do, bro? Cause I'm heating shit up in here. 
Yeah. It's like the same thing with gold stones. I don't even know what a gold bladder does. Why yeah, do you I don't, a gold bladder I don't like, like like the, the concept of the kidney stones is like horrific to me. That's I'm terrifying like, to me. I hope yeah. to God I never experienced that. I'm, I'm like, yo, so scared. You talking about peeing out a sugar cube? <laughs> See, I am mortified of the idea of kidney stones, yo. I've I heard niggas you. describing it, and it sounds like pure agony. No, I mean, when I heard niggas describe it, I'm like, well, what else could it be? Yeah, it has to be that. You telling me I got to pass. Out a you got to pass. Yeah, you got to pass. You say, yeah, and the crazy thing, when you see the description, they're like, oh, let the stone pass. And I'm like, bro, y'all saying that shit like it. <laughs> you know, I'd rather just have surgery, and y'all just cut out the kidney they got the stones. The other one good, right? He said, nah, yeah, look, man, split, okay. split, split my shit like a kielbasa, go in there and go get it. I know they have medicine to break it down so it's easy to pass, but that they, sounds even they, Do they pour it in through the front? It's more. You, you got to piss more rocks out. So, like, imagine instead of pissing out, like, one big rock, you piss out 30 smaller rocks over nah, the course of a month. but truth be told, if that one big rock is going to send you to the oh. hospital, then you'll take them I mean, 30, you can't piss them out 30 the more. Rock. You got to take the medicine. I'm just saying, extending it and prolonging it, it sounds terrible. Oh, yeah. Or at the same time, if you already got the issue, it's at least like breaking it down and making it more palatable over time. Do women get kidney stones? I only hear about niggas getting them. Do women even have kidneys? Come on, man. <laughs> Say that. See? Now you now you getting into it, girl boss. Now I'm getting into it. <laughs> but anyway, what was we talking about? Uh, so, uh, men, niggas dating broke, right? So um, basically, I've seen some shit where... So not even seen some shit. Right? Let's, let's back up, right? Um, we have all known and heard from niggas that women are gold diggers, and not just any woman, but women need oh, them. Wait, before you get to this subject, I just saw something on Twitter. There was a nigga doing some some wild shit, just the wildest shit I've ever seen. And then a nigga said, "I gotta try crack one day," and I'm just like. Have you ever seen a nigga doing something so crazy? You were just like, just one time I want to try some crap. Not, but I've definitely seen niggas doing something so crazy where I thought to myself, I want to live life like that. This guy doesn't have to give a fuck. He doesn't have to be yeah. right. He doesn't have to think. He doesn't have to make sense. I, I, I want to be him. Imagine, like you see crackheads zonking out all the time. Like they just be standing still staring at nothing. Or those heroin addicts. You said nothing. Nah, it's something there. Y'all just can't see it. <laughs> see, it's, what people it's the don't sixth know sense, is, nigga. They put a little DMT in the crack, so they open their third eye, so they see some shit. We nah, just niggas don't it. know crack. You know what? So remember, the government released crack to us, right? And so what they did was they did an incredibly nefarious thing. They put the secret and the key to life in crack. So once you smoke the crack, your third eye open. Now you see the world for yeah, what that, really is. But guess what? Yeah. But guess what? Guess what the drawback is? They gonna call you a crackhead. You can't win. You can't win because they gonna say, "Look at this crackhead talking about the world ending." It. Well, he don't know what he he a crackhead. Come on now. They do always show homeless people with the world is in the signs in movies. They do portray. Well, let's like not conflate crackheads and homeless people. It's two distinctly different groups. They are. They are. Like I'm sure there's plenty of homeless people that do heroin. Like, come on. Let's not disrespect anybody here. Well, you people with jobs that do crack. There's functional drug addicts. Yeah, there was a dude um from one of the I forgot what school it was. He was a professor, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, I microdose heroin." And I remember people were just like, "Oh yeah, he was on the breakfast club." Blah, blah, blah. And they were like, and I was just like, "Bro, I think y'all need to understand." I tell people this all the time: in the right dosage, all of these things will work. Every single one of them, nigga, fentanyl will probably work in some dosage, not in the doses we putting it in. Clearly. Right now, the those niggas is cutting shit with, but I know there's applications for it outside of whatever the fuck we think right now. It's the same way with DMT when they found out, oh, you can use MDMA to treat PTSD. What the fuck? Right? Like, so there's so many different ways to use all of this shit. So that's why for me, it's just like, look, bro, it's a use for crack. All y'all niggas is doing is trying to destroy black communities with it, though. And y'all just like, well, shit, that's all I'm using it for. But, but we could. Apply it to other things. You, you don't have to destroy communities with it. I mean, that's said, no, no, no. But like, I wanted to destroy the community anyway, so it's kind of like a yeah. twofer, you know? It's like a bogo. 
But um, yeah, so so I we all we've all uh wanted to try crack once, but we've all um seen niggas who will swear up and down, right? That the women these days, they ain't like my mama, they ain't like my grandma, they ain't like them women, they just gold niggas, they just want this, they want that, blah blah blah, boom, boom, so on and so forth, ad nauseum, right? And so to me, I always the part that always bothered me is that you're not fundamentally wrong. But then it's just like, but why do you think that's a bad thing? Right? Like, you're not fundamentally wrong. Women do want a man that can take care of them financially. Why wouldn't they want that? Yeah. That's my whole point. Why wouldn't you, like, if you're talking to a nigga, you make 40 thou, and that nigga is struggling. He's just, he's doing odd jobs. And you might think, nah, nigga, I got enough trouble keeping myself afloat. And now you, okay. nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. Can't do it, buddy. Right? So my thing is, it's not like she's, oh, I don't fuck with you because you broke. No, you being broke will get in the way of certain things. And that shit going to become a problem. So to me, that's the first part. And then the second part is that um, women, they broke niggas all the time. Because that's who's out there. Look, like, have you seen the way wealth is is distributed? Yeah, no, think about it. Have you seen the way wealth is distributed in this country? Nigga, the poor get poor and the rich get richer. So chances are, if you're not dating a rich nigga, you dating a broke nigga. Like, that's just yeah, how the country's going. Right, so that's how the country's being set up, right? So if you're not dating a rich nigga, you pretty much are dating a broke nigga. I'm not saying all of y'all, but like I would argue probably 75 to 80% of women are dating a nigga they would classify as broke, right? Yeah. Like, you might not be broke broke. But if she make 80000 and you make forty, nigga, you're broke to her. Yeah, you make less than her. Because she's like, nigga, that's half of my money. I couldn't live off of that. That's broke to me. If I can't live off it, you broke. That's how I see it. <laughs> so, but then the other part is, right, like, what world would you live in where you would sit up here and, and, and know that you're broke and know that you're with a woman who wants something financial and still try to make that work. Right. And that's the part where the self-awareness comes in. And that's the part it's, that uh, niggas literally refuse to ever at any point consider where it's like, all right, if you're broke and you know, she is literally, no, that's a science behind it. The niggas know, but they don't want to acknowledge. And I'll say it right now. Oh, they do what a lot of things want every woman on earth. I don't care if I'm out of your league or not. I feel like I'm entitled to you and I deserve you. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you uh-huh. got money and I'm broke. So I still want you. Yeah, and I offer so something to the table. You, I'm going to be pissed off and I'm going to say women don't want broke niggas and women are gold diggers because I don't have access to you. That's all it is. That's literally mm-hmm. all it is. And, and, and it's so nuts to me because I've been in so many relationships where I was the broke nigga, right? And like, again, and we talked about this right before, but that shit bothered me more than it bothered them. And I think that's the crux of this issue. I think this shit bothers niggas more than it bothers the women they date. This isn't even for like dating. This is like, this goes in like marriage territory. A lot of men oh, yeah, in of course. That's marriages where women make more money, they feel emasculated, and then that causes problems, and then things get divorced. Yeah. When the woman was perfectly happy, but the, the man fucked it up because they just. I'm not like that. I'm gonna have my queen making five hundred thousand a year. And I'm mm-hmm. gonna tend to the home, and she gonna be like, "Shut up!" I'm gonna be like, "Okay, what you want for dinner?" And I'll be quiet. And I think part of what comes with that, though, and, and this is the part because I've seen um, I, that happens more often, right? The nigga, uh, it's a, it's a, the, the when the woman's winning and the nigga not, it's like, oh nah, fuck that, I'm out of here. I don't want to be with her. But usually, when you see a nigga winning and the woman's not, I mean, that is kind of that was historically That's what we saw. Man. Yeah, that was historically what was happening. So uh, to me, it's just like, I know, um, I, I just can't figure out why. Well, I, I know the answer, right? I hate saying, like, I don't know why when I know why. But it's like, it's just the level of insecurity that it takes to see a woman who clearly don't want the man you are. And to then, instead of pretending to be a different nigga, that's what a smart schemer would do, right? If Oh, all right, well, I'll just pretend I'm someone else. It's nasty, but that's what it's niggas nasty, do. It's yeah, it's nasty, but that's what niggas do, right? That's what a normal nigga would do. You decided, no, 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 I'm going to take option C. That's convince her that she never wanted a nigga with money in the first place. And I'm just saying, hey, bro, what is it? Like, y'all niggas pick the hardest option every time. 
right? Like, like you, you'll you find a shorty like, oh, she, you know, she she like a certain type of dude. So instead of like either a trying to be that dude or b admitting I'm not that guy and moving on, I'm gonna see try to walk you off of that ledge and make you settle for another nigga who you'll never be happy with. And it's like, and then that'd be the part where it's like, bro, y'all niggas will force people into situations and then wonder why they end the way they want end. Like you, if you force the woman to fuck with you in the sense, like you basically you 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 were persistent, you broke down the walls, you put in enough fucking effort, and I'm not, not talking good effort, you just were fucking badgering her to the point where she was like, all right, man, all right, fuck it, I'll try it, I'll try it, whatever. It's coercion at that point, right? Exactly. I'll try it, whatever. I'll try it, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that's so to me, my thing is like, I'm not gonna say people who are broke should not be dating. Because I, I always, niggas always said that, and I was like, nah, that's fucked up. Y'all some nasty niggas for saying shit like that. Like, now I would say, if you broke as shit, be careful about having kids. I wouldn't say don't have kids, because that's also some nasty shit. But, yeah, you got to be careful, yeah. for sure, for sure. But, well, no, nah, I can't say don't, because my nigga, no one can afford to have a child. Like, literally. Like, when you look at who can, I, I think you're going to be a little bit worried about who's having kids and who's not. Right, so let, let's. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that's what I always. That's the part I always go back to, where it's like, all right, cool. If you tell all the poor niggas not to have kids, look at who's having kids and who's not. Let's talk about it. Yeah, it's true. So it's true. Um, but me, I know for me, like, no, all right. So poor people need to fuck more. We need poor to people do them. fuck more. Poor no, people, no, poor I'm... people be fucking like what, what? No, but I was just saying your original point of saying. If you're poor, be more careful about having kids. But oh, you saying they need to have more? <laughs> I'm saying they need to be more in the minority. We need to become more in the majority. I'm saying so keep and they on. get off of work, going home. Oh man, and they got that devil on shoulder. You better go home, put some energy, go get that gas station dick pill, and fuck your wife. Bro, I'm just tired. Like, bro, I just, bro, I just worked a 16 hour, hour shift, dog. I, yesterday I worked a 12, bro. My feet fucking killing me. I don't give a fuck about your feet, nigga. But I'm telling you, go get that Barack Obama pill. Go get that swag, sex that, with a grudge. That butt naked. What's that shit with the Street Fighter characters on it? And it's got <laughs> no, Chun Li's butt naked. You asking me like I know them, like <laughs> like I know the brands. I, I have no idea. I feel like they're the same place everywhere. You seen Rhino? Yeah, I've seen Rhino. Yeah, I've you seen, seen the gold. swag, sex with a grudge. I haven't seen swag. That shit is... But I've seen that little funny. goal, whichever the goal one is. I've been seeing the Street Fighter one everywhere. It must be a DC thing. But Yo, I've what's actually in... Places. Hold on, hold on. Quick question. What is really in them shits? Can we talk about this? What is oh, really yeah, in them They sold at liquor stores, so they can't be FDA approved. No, nah, I know that. Like, it, it's like hydroxy cut in that bitch or something. But, like, I'm just genuinely trying to figure out what's really in them shits. Some stimulant to get your heart pumping. Some they got some, some guarana, some coke. <laughs> coke. Like, because I always think to myself, like, I know some of the natural ones have this and that, and at least those ones are like, they do a better job at letting you know what's in it, right? Yeah. Like, but then you get those ones, like you were saying, this shit don't got no ingredients. It don't got nothing, nigga. It's, it's just, just a pack. You just it's just it. a pill, a pill in a single pack, and at the top, it's just a little picture of a cartoon bitch looking bad as hell. And, and that's it. That's it. It's just... Yo, when you take this, you like hello? Nah, ain't no instructions, nigga. <laughs> it's just it. Ain't even no warning. It's not like Viagra where you have an erection for more than eight hours. No. Yeah, he said when you it. take this, dot dot dot. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, okay. Thank, thank I'll you. I'll never, I'll never take a gas station dick pill. Uh, did you have you seen that meme? <laughs> and it stays. I love staring out on the balcony naked. And it's like when a fat nigga take that gas station dick pill, his heart start racing. That is funny as shit. I can't imagine that though, because like again, like I remember the first time I had a five hour energy was before a track meet, right? And that shit felt like hell. It felt like hell. Like I had a five hour energy and ran my first four hundred, and I ain't know what a four hundred felt like. But boy, did I find out. And then boy, did I find out what it feels like What it feels like when you are off a of five-hour energy, nigga. <laughs> and your heart is fucking jumping out the box. My heart never did shit for me. Nigga, I would take this shit before class in college and still fall asleep in class. No, I know. 
Think about it though. That's because you sitting still. It ain't it wasn't nothing to save you except like some ice on your eyelids and some silly shit. You was just done. Caffeine for. to wake my ass up, yo. I don't even think it's caffeine. Well, I mean, I don't know. The one I had, I don't think it was. I don't. That shit tastes nasty too. But you had the flavor ones. I was taking was busting. I always think this was like high school though. You gotta understand. This is like 2011. This is a oh, minute they probably ago. Improved they, the yeah, they ain't had, they, they ain't really even you had no flavors back then. Basically, basically had untested four loco from Mexico. It still had <laughs> caffeine in it. Yeah, I remember four locos used to do niggas so fucking filthy, man. So filthy. That was the original bath salt zombies. Truly, truly, actually. Now that I think about it. That and it was funny because the four locals used to get me smacked. But it wasn't until I got to college and I tried one of them uh them 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 limeritas where I was just like, yo, I can't ever drink this shit again. I can't ever drink this again. Like I drank a limerita, I got halfway through the can, and when I tell you, dog, the dehydration set in instantly. Halfway through the can, my head started pounding. I'm like, yo, this not I'm not even drunk. Why do I feel why am I hurt? Like that's the part that was making what is in a limerita? It's just hella sugar. That's all it is. It's just sugar. Sugar out the ass. And you know, like in terms of like hangovers, the dehydration is usually what makes it worse. Except it there ain't no hangover, nigga. 20 minutes later, you dehydrated. I'm just like, yo, my shit hurts yeah. now. I want to go home right now. Night just started and I'm ready to go, nigga. I'm, I'm shit so glad right. I outgrew malt liquor. What else is in malt liquor? Like, you talking like Mad Dogs? Like, uh. Is Mad Dog malt? It's not like carbonated like beer, is it? I thought it was like malt and whatever that fucking weird juice is. I don't remember Mad Dog having a fizz like Four Loco. I thought the malt was like the the fizz, the carbonation, the froth. I thought that's uh, what malt was. It's fortified wine. Okay, that's I don't. That's what the fuck malt does fortified liquor. mean? I don't even want to look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to. I used to drink a lot of Mad Dog. Uh, so I don't want to know what's in it. And oh, okay. I see. I live. see what, what what's considered malt liquor. Yeah, out of Local these wineritas. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at like just straight beers, like OEs and shit. Oh yeah, Old English. Yeah, it's definitely malt. Cult 45. Yeah, those are the ones. See, like those are I know, I didn't know Pat Blue Ribbon is malt liquor. That makes sense though. Um, yeah, that's why niggas used to go home and wild out. That's why that shit used to cost like a dollar. <laughs> I went to a place. I remember they had two dollar pitchers of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Nah, that's fucking disgusting. I was like, dog, two dollar pitchers. I, and bro, I bought one, and I was like, all right, I'm not gonna do this again. I'm afraid to keep <laughs> drinking this shit. Like, <laughs> you gonna end up in a bar fight? <laughs> There's some liquor that just you gotta I bring it out of you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of niggas are always brown for me. I'm like, y'all niggas just be liking a fight. Stop it. It's whatever y'all yeah. doing. But I they will say, really yeah, yeah, I will say, it, really it, is it is something about that honey. It's, I think it's the fact that it tastes so bad. It tastes so bad, well, so it angers the drinker, well, right? And so well, what happens is because of the drinker subtly well, angry about the disgusting well, and filthy fucking taste of this well, disgusting, terrible brown sh- shit. This is anti-black. It's anti Hennessy. It's, um, it's, it's, it's good. It could be. It certainly could be. And what about it? We got a lot of black viewers. You shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't. And what about it? Oh well, man, y'all figure something out. First off, first off, niggas was sold on uh, what was it, cognac? I remember reading about the history of that and like how niggas it's, uh, it's niggas drink. Yeah, like, but I remember reading the history of how it became a black like staple, and I was like, huh. That's amazing. Um, so basically, it was like, I think it was World War II. They were going overseas, right? And so what happened was there was these bars where, you know, even overseas, like, there was the American soldiers and then there was the regular soldiers. Now, the American white soldiers ain't want to chill with the niggas. They was like, I don't fuck with them niggas like that. Nah, I don't. Meanwhile, the niggas they were that, I think it was they were in France. And those niggas was just like. What? I have heard the story. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, right. And the niggas in France are just, just like bars overseas. And niggas just fucking with us. Niggas. Yeah, and they're like, bro, why they don't want? Why they? Why they not like? Y- y'all cool. Why they don't want? Bro, that's with crazy. You? You, you look at me, right? So you see how I'm brown? They don't fuck with that. He said that. And niggas be like, did what? you do anything to them, or is, is it no. just that? They just don't like it. So wow, that's crazy. Wow. Okay. So he looked at you and did, honey, do we have that here? <laughs> 
Y'all do. Y'all yeah, no, they know. definitely do. He, he just ain't heard of it. He's like, I, I don't, I don't, I've never seen such a thing in France. Have you seen such a people in France? He said, mm, okay, you're on to something. <laughs> you're on, you're on to something. Yeah. Well, well, hey, I'll tell you what then. Why don't you stick around? Stick around, man. Listen, let these people know, man. Well, we'll give you our finest stuff. You, you ever had Martel? And it was like, mm-mm. He said, oh, man, it's real good. It's cognac. You're going to love it. Oh, boy, yeah. did those, boy, did oh, those niggas those love cheese? it. He oh, said, yeah. Co- cognac? <laughs> cognac? What the cognac. fuck? Nigga took one sip of that Martel on the rocks and said, mm, okay. Yeah. <sighs> Takes the edge off. It was like exclusively marketed to black people. Yeah. Oh, well, think about it. When they came back, that's what was happening. Seen niggas, so many images of just niggas drinking Hennessy. Niggas came back from the war. Was like, y'all want some cognac? Yeah, like Hennessy, and niggas like, you want some what? Some cognac? What you... There was two choices back then before they realized it was a market. Yeah. It was what brandy, and that was it, right? No, I think it was brandy that niggas was, was getting onto. I think that's what it was actually. I was gonna say I'm... brandy, not even cognac. It's his own thing. I think. No, I know that. I know that. But I, I it was. I think it was. Brandy that niggas? I don't remember one of those. They brandy probably came out. back and there was no brandy, so niggas like, what's the next closest thing? And then they got no cognac. Yeah, or or either or. I don't know which one. Like they probably came back and was like, let me get some cognac. We don't got that. What y'all got? Uh, Paul Mason. Fuck. Let me get that. <laughs> let me get that. <laughs> Paul Mason. Hey, some E and J XO. I'm so glad that I'm an adult now. I Shit. remember days of drinking Palmason. I know EJ. grown adults drinking Christian Brothers, nigga. Sick, sick yeah, man. Never had Christian Brothers. Oh boy, it, don't worry, it's it's worse than Palmason. Good God, they got Christian Brothers honey too. It's probably so just like is Christian Brothers like Amsterdam. No, uh, Palmason is probably like Amsterdam. What's below Amsterdam? Yeah, yeah, it's like exclusive or something like uh or the no, plastic exclusive. vodka. Plastic. What's the plastic vodka? Uh, not Majorska. Is it? Majorsk. Or no, 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 fuck. It's, it's Burnett's. That's what it is. Nobody ever heard of Burnett's. I know, I know. <laughs> Burnett's used to be $10, Pinnacle. like, flavor. Oh, Pinnacles. Pinnacle. I'd say Pinnacles, probably on the same tier as, uh, what was the first one we said? Nope, it is not. Pinnacles is definitely on Amsterdam. Pinnacle, first no, of all, Pinnacle No, the hell it's is... not. Amsterdam stinks. They're the same tier. Pinnacle is flavored, so that additional not all of them. Making sure that you get the. I've never had just straight up Pinnacle. I've there's like had yeah, there's like twenty something flavors of Pinnacle. I know. I only know because all the white people I was with used to drink that shit. That shit. And I had every. I had it. cotton candy, nigga. I had fucking Ugh. birthday cake. I had all types of ugly See, there's ass, some stuff that you ass grow flavor. out of. The older you get, like Fireball. Niggas shouldn't have even grown into that. <laughs> pinnacle. I didn't have to grow it. I tried it a couple times. I was like, no, this is terrible. It's no, I never like Pinnacle. It's I only terrible. had it. I only had it like, uh, like I only knowingly drank it twice. I'm probably, I probably drank it more than that. But yeah, it was Dude, only that's twice. That's why I'm saying Amsterdam is a little bit higher than Pinnacle because I used to drink Amsterdam. Pinnacle. Thirteen dollars a bottle was all I had, so nigga, that's what you getting. That's the only reason why I was drinking Burnett's. Nigga, Burnett's used to cost ten dollars for like the seven hundred and fifty milliliter. Oh, yeah, 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 just, just, yeah, just, just wonder why it's that cheap, nigga. Shit, filthy. Yo, completely off topic, but can you imagine what it's like to be deaf and blind? No. How do you even function, like? How did they teach Helen Keller words and shit? How I don't know. Like, how do you even like, go about starting teaching? That's probably the weirdest part. Like, like, like I'm just imagining. Once you get going, I, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, you're just in total darkness. It's like constant sensory deprivation. You can't hear nothing, so nobody's teaching nothing. You can't see nothing. Like, so you don't progress past an infant, do you? You just you don't know words. So you just constantly in your head just eat, sleep, shit, just your primal instinct. No, deaf people, um, 
I so I think the again I don't, I don't I'm not I have no fucking clue um so I could be totally wrong but um, as far as I know deaf people like when they close their eyes they can see things I don't know what they can see um, blind people well yeah blind people sorry yeah and and, and deaf uh, I was getting kind of the same like deaf people can't hear themselves but they know words and how certain things can sound and so on and so forth because I've heard deaf people speak and some of them can actually speak well so I'm just like so well, how yeah, did you learn to speak they, well? They probably saw, they read people's lips and they probably imitate their lips. But if you're also blind, how do you see, like, it's like just, like I said, it's like in a sim- sensory deprivation. Yeah, it's like a sensory that's, deprivation thing. That wouldn't, like, that wouldn't mean you can't develop. I would imagine that it's develop. just complete, just nothing. And that's the other thing I think. Like, what happens if, like, I mean, and I know this is probably, like, very trivial. When we develop, but, yeah. No, I was just saying, like, when we develop as, like, from children to adults, or not even just adults, but children to babies to children to adolescents, all that shit, like, we're learning things that are on the way because of our senses. Like, mm-hmm. we we learn through hearing, we learn through seeing. So, like, if you can't hear or see, does, like... It makes it harder, of course. There's obviously a way to teach people because people have learned, but it's just... Yeah, I can imagine. Like, it's hard to like to be a deaf and blind super scientist. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that's probably like the hardest fucking thing on earth. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I would think like, uh, I don't know how, I don't know how you would actually get it done. Um, and to me, I was even thinking of some trivial shit, like if like a blind person does acid, do they hallucinate? What do they see? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, because I know like you can have hallucinations with your eyes closed. So yeah, what happens? Mm. Them niggas probably seeing God directly. Nigga popped the tab yeah, and God's just like, yeah, man. Oh, hold on, I got, I got a visit. Hold on, yo, what's good? <laughs> He's so, unexpected. Oh, God. how did you get here? Yeah, yeah, what's what's Jared? Is that you? How are you up here? Uh, you're not dead. No, I just popped a nah, sheet real quick. I did a little. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so you probably got a couple minutes. So, what you want to know? <laughs> he timing it out. He like, okay, yeah, he got like a minute and a half. All right, so what? Shit, what you? What, what you want to know? And then they just come down and they don't remember nothing they heard from God. Yeah, not a damn thing. Like, and he tell him right before he about to leave. Oh, so you got five seconds, and by the way, you're not gonna remember any of this. <laughs> no, what? no, wait. What was the point? <laughs> 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 they got back. Yo, I had this weird ass dream. What was it about? It was like, fuck. <laughs> it was like, the like guy was in it somewhere, but. Oh, and then, um, what happened? That'd be the worst when you have a vivid ass dream. Like, while you're dreaming, they feel like you awake, and then you wake up, and this shit is gone. I hate when, like, you, you know what the dream is, and as you start describing it, the shit vanish. Yeah. You'd be like, it's oh like, yeah, so tell me why I had a dream, right? It was me and my boys and um uh come on, no. <laughs> nah, come on, bro. It was me and my boys. It me off because <laughs> I've had like garbled ass dreams where while I was dreaming it, it felt like I was watching it through static and I woke up and didn't know what was going on. I was like, Yeah, that makes sense. I don't remember that. But dreams where I'm it, I'm participating, I'm here. It's crystal mm-hmm. clear, like I'm watching the movie and I wake up and don't remember nothing. Yeah, you wake up and like what? it's like it's like a four second window. Like the yeah. shit get it's like you know like when you tell your computer to shut down and like back up and sync is running so it, that has to close first before it shuts down. It's That's like that. A dream journal. Like as soon as I wake up, if I have a wild ass dream, I write it down. But even the problem with that is like again, you gotta get to it because it'd be like five six seconds in that shit. Yeah, because like if you wake up, you grow be like, damn, that dream was crazy. What was the dream about? You like no, if your you first if you your first thought has to be the dream. Yeah, yeah. You got to jolt awake. You, you got jolt to the awake. Okay, so I was in the mud and me. <laughs> you got because I've had that before where I'm just like, yo, that shit was wow. And that part where I was um, the part where, fuck, no, no, the part where. Nah, <laughs> and then you can't remember. Why, you can't remember. That's why my dream it. journal instead of being like actual journal, it's just the notes app on my phone. My phone is yeah, like next to me in so I wake up and then tap, 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 tap. I'm not a... Nigga, wake up. Lano Del Rey, but Latina? 
with a question mark. He'd be like, I don't know. I don't know what the Yo, fuck I've had about. some crazy, some dreams so fucking insane that that shit could be a movie. And I've literally typed up like a fucking five page outline of a fucking script for a movie all off a dream that I had. Like, mm-hmm. I'd be watching motion pictures. I remember one time I had a dream. That I was sitting in a movie theater watching a movie in Spanish. And you fell asleep and they left you in the theater? <laughs> no, the dream has subtitles. But the I dream has Spanish. subtitles? I don't speak Spanish, speak Spanish, Spanish. but it was, it was English subtitles on the bottom of the screen. But the funny That's part, how, how did you know it was Spanish? Did you like, can you recognize it was Spanish? Yeah, I recognize it. Like, He's like, I don't know no, what they're saying, but that's definitely Spanish. Like, I, I'm pretty sure it was my subconscious because I've been learning Spanish all my life since like uh, kindergarten. And then in middle school, I learned French. I don't remember no French. And then I took it again in high school. I took uh, Spanish again in high school. So there's at least like five or six years of my life. Where yeah, there's introductory Spanish. Spanish in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm assuming that that dream was in Spanish and my subconscious. Because your subconscious remembers everything. You don't consciously remember everything. But I feel yeah, like subconscious is filling it in. My subconscious put subtitles in my fucking dream so I can understand what's going on. Hey. But see, <laughs> I always wish I could like get into my dream. Because I get the feeling, right, that if I were to be able to see my own dreams, like see them, I feel like it would be like, it would basically be like a farce. It'd be like a half-run show. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like... You sit there, and once you're actually present for the dream, you realize, oh, there's so many missing gaps because I'm fucking sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just, there's just random shit coming up. So like, there's times where, oh, I don't know what the Spanish word for so and so is, so I'm just gonna not say anything or make something up. You know what I mean? Because you're, like you said, your subconscious is filling in everything. But if you don't have an answer for it, it's just gonna put something there. You need to so, like, learn it, how, to, how to lucid dream so you can control your dreams. I have lucid dream. I, the weirdest dream I had was when I lucid dreamed. Um, I'd be, I'd be taking the reins. Once I realize I'm dreaming, I'm like, this shit weird. And then yeah, this I is the first time. Like, I literally remember reading it, looking it up, like loose dream. Okay, cool, cool, blah, 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 blah. And then I tried it, and then the dream happened right after that, and I was like, okay, I don't think I want to do that anymore. <laughs> it's just weird. I was like, I don't. I, it was like, literally, like, like a dream. You can't control the dream, but you can control your actions. So like, even if the situation, yeah, is exactly. Bad, but that's what it was. Okay, so I'm being chased by Jason now, but I can run away, but I can't get rid of Jason. Okay. And my, mine wasn't even so much scary. It was just one of them shits where, like, it's just a mind fuck. Like, I, cause, like, yeah. mine was, like, mad weird. Like, it was, like, it was set at, like, my grandma's house in the South, like, in North Carolina. And we were coming in through her garage. So, I opened the garage door, open the door, and then I'm walking in. And it's, like, as soon as I take one step, like, inside the garage door, it's, like, it's almost as if I'm walking on a track. Like, you know how, like, roller coasters got a track and you got to follow, like, it's, like, my yeah. movements are, like, confined to this track. I can't move independent outside the track. And then um, I'm going, I'm going, and I'm going. And then I get to a certain point where I'm like, wait, I don't even think I'm walking. Because I don't hear my feet. I don't feel my feet. I Like, I'm just floating on this little track, right? So I'm just, like, kind of floating through this grip. And I'm going, I'm going. I go through this thing, and I get to the kitchen. When I get to the kitchen, there's a sink with water running, right? And the water's running in a sink, and it's right at the edge where it should overflow, and it's going over the edge, but not out of the sink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's overflowing, but not yeah, actually yeah. overflowing. A little reflecting pool in the sink. Right, right. Some some strange shit. So I'm seeing that. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. And then a phone's ringing, a phone's ringing. And it's really faint. And as I get closer to it, it gets louder, 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 louder until I get right next to it and it just stops completely. And then I keep going right past the phone. Um, and then I see, uh, I think it's my, my cousin was sitting on the couch watching TV. Um, and the way the TV's face, I can't see what they're watching. I could just see him on the couch. So I'm going towards him. I'm going towards him. He doesn't say anything to me. I walk past him and I stop like right in front of the TV. I turn and look at the TV. There's porn on the TV for some strange reason. I look back at him. He's not there anymore. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll see you later, I guess. So I keep going and I go into one of the back rooms in my house. It's like where my great grandmother oh, used to live. I went to the back room, so. Yeah, it's one of my great grandmothers that used to live in. Um, and for whatever reason, in this room, you know, I, I was hearing like this, like almost like chanting from the room. And I was just like, what the fuck going on? So I was like, all right, well, fuck it. And I reached for the door. Now, the door now was cold as fuck. But I opened the door anyway, and I opened it. And it's like three women in, like, hoods standing around. Uh, not standing, sitting around in a circle. No, it was four. It was four women in the hoods. Sitting around in circles, like, s- chanting something. I can't even, like, make out what they're chanting. They're just saying something. It's just like they're repeating some sort of phrase or whatever. 
So I'm just sitting there kind of like looking at them and they don't see me and I can't see their faces for a little while because their hoods are covering it. So I'm looking like, what the fuck is going on? Sit there for a couple seconds. One of them turns around and she has the face of Lana Del Rey. Don't know why. Don't have any idea. So I see that. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? They all turn around. They all have the face of Lana Del Rey. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm going to head out. I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to leave y'all to um whatever so ritual y'all was I was like, whatever ritual y'all was doing, I'm sorry, yeah. ladies. I'm going to just close the door. Rituals your dreams yet? Somebody, somebody trying to body snatch you. So it's I just closed the door. So, <laughs> so I just closed the door. And then at this point, I'm leaving to go out like my front door, uh, the front door of my grandma's house, which is a door that no one uses. Like she never uses her front door like ever for anything. Um, And so we go out the front door. And like, as I walk out of it, it's like, it like they damn near teleports me to like my old house that I grew up and went to high school in and all that other shit. And one of my you friends out abruptly ended like that. Like I was looking for a resolution. And no, it, it, it teleported me. And the final thing was like it was like this girl I knew uh, who I was good friends with at the time, and she just like hit me. Was like, hey, you want some stir fry? I'm like, all right, sure. And that was the end of the dream. She goes into the house, and I try to open the door of the house, and I can't get back in the house. And the dream ends yep. from there. And sometimes, I'm just like, hello. I don't be understanding my dreams sometimes because sometimes I be other people, like. Yeah, I've had that I'll, before. Like, I'll be watching a dream. Like, say, I'll be watching something happen in a dream. And, like, in, like I'm watching it, but at the same time, I'm the main character. I'm the nigga that's doing it. But I'm watching it. And mm-hmm. something happens, something happens, something happens. And then, like, later in the dream, I'm in control and not watching it. And it's actually me. Yeah, you're like, oh, that was me? Oh. Yeah. And, like, I'm, I look that different and everything, me. but I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, that should be blowing me. I'll be like, how, like, I've had that before where like I literally had a dream I was a white guy. I was mad. I woke up like what? How I make that stop? <laughs> how I know, stop doing I, it? I read somewhere that every person that you see in your dreams is Don't somebody that you Don't see in real life and your subconscious is just putting them in your dream. But that can't be true. I've been in crowds full of thousands of people in my dreams, yo, and everyone. It's possible though, because your brain That's... probably took so many pictures. You gotta understand. I think the human brain is like outlandishly fucking. Like it's probably the greatest advancement that we have that we haven't even tapped into yet. Like I think in the next yeah. coming hundreds of years, we'll really get into a lot of the brain studies and science and realize there's a lot of shit about the human condition we had no fucking clue about. Um. So with that being said, I, I think I think it's entirely possible the brain can just capture just, hundreds of millions of images, like okay, photo right, flash right, right. images of people you've just randomly seen on a bus right. at a so show. Keep this though. What about somebody, and this is a fucked up situation, what about somebody that's in a cult that was raised in a cult and they never seen people outside of the cult? Mm. The faces in their dreams just be blank? No, you know what? All the faces be... You know that nigga from the poster that'd be like, have you seen this man? <laughs> the dream man in their dream. Any nigga that's the dream man. <laughs> the dream man in their dream. Oh no, it's the dream man. That nigga do look terrifying. I used to hate seeing that shit as a kid. He just Yeah, now nah, he's just be like, have you seen this man? No, no, no one's seen him. Get him <laughs> off the screen, please. What's it? This man no looks dark. Yeah. This man look like one of them X-Files niggas they be looking for. He looked like an alien that just made up a composite image of every uh, of what he think a nigga look like. <laughs> <laughs> like they were what? just like, yo, quick, they asked what you look like in a dream. Oh fuck. Uh 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 give him something. Give him something. Give him something. You got it? Oh yeah, give him that, give him that. What is that? What's that? It's like, oh, it's a composite sketch of eight thousand humans. Okay, all right. It, that'll work. Well, fine. Man, he's gonna look like the most basic thing on earth then, right? He said, all right, cool. So no. he won't look like me. That'll be fine. <laughs> But yeah, so now I, I definitely think like the brain is capable of shit that we we aren't even capable of comprehending yet. You know what I'm saying? Like again, because like yeah. stuff like stuff like look at uh, the concept of like limitless, right? Where they're saying we only use a certain percentage of our brain. I was literally, yeah. right? And the I mean, thing that's, is, that's been debunked for years. But no, no, I know that. I know I still that. Right? The movie. I know that. But even beyond that, right? There's probably some truth to the fact that we're not fully utilizing our brains the way we're supposed. 100%, to. There yeah. has to be truth to that. And so my thing yeah. is, yeah, maybe it's not 1%. Maybe it's not 5, 10, 15. Maybe, maybe we're at 30%. But here's the thing. If we're at 30, what the fuck does 70 look like? You know what I'm saying? Like, think about the scientific advances we've had from people who have presumably been at whatever the average baseline percentage is for human beings, right? Like, so what happens when you then provide billionaires and rich niggas and science niggas and niggas with resources who then have 70% of their brain open? 
They're going to find Yo, new and novel ways to screw the people of the com- uh, company. I'm about to go on a tangent. Have you seen uh, Lucy? Uh, Lucy, that was the was um, Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah. I, I did, but like, don't. Don't don't quote me because boy I don't remember shit. That anymore. shit is it's basically limitless on steroids. Like she takes a drug, well, she yeah. take a drug, it gets put in her body, and then she unlocks 100 percent of her brain, and it gets to the point where she can basically teleport and go through time and shift her appearance and. Well, wasn't that movie basically supposed to be a uh, white ghost in a shell? I think that was more so what it was, right? No, she. Scarlet, you're confusing. Scarlett Johansson literally made white ghost in the shell. Right, and that was it, right? No, it was called Ghost in the Shell. They made oh, a white version. Oh, she's little, and this was just, okay. This was yeah, like the Scarlet this was the primer Scarlet. for the white Ghost in the Shell. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> wow, she was movie. in the actual. Wow, I did. I forgot all that shit. Yeah, that's when niggas started making the jokes. The Scarlet. No, I remember. I remember. That's I remember it. when that's niggas were saying she could play uh, Gandhi in the biopic. Yeah, I yeah. remember. <laughs> that's where it all originated. But no, all right. So wow. bear with me, like so. We're talking about unlocking a hundred percent of the brain, right? Mm-hmm. All right, think about this. Go all the way back. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be redistributed. Right? As far as we know, yes. As far as we know, so we'll see. Big Bang, universe created, Earth created, humans created from you know well, amoeba from the, created the from remnants the of ooze. Yeah, and then humans come along. So after. Millions, millions, and millions of, of years, years, years of evolution. evolution. There's traces of the universe in our brain somewhere, some galactic stardust. So if you think about her like turning into different animals and shaping her appearance and everything, obviously that's not possible. That's just a gimmick, but it's something it's still interesting to think about. And it made me think about a movie I watched from the 70s. Um let me see if I can find the name. Basically, it was a movie I watched from the 70s where a nigga was studying the human brain um, and he was studying in a sensory depth. Damn, this is crazy because we were talking about sensory deprivation checks earlier. So basically, he was taking hallucinogens like acid or shrooms or DMT in a sensory deprivation tank to see oh, man. <laughs> what, he, what he could find. That boy. And then, um, yeah, it gets kind of crazy. So the nigga... He goes to uh, an indigenous community in Mexico where these people were taking a a local drug that they made out of some type of mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And the way they described it was when you take this and you go on your spiritual journey, you find your first self. Mm -hmm. And so the dude, he takes it. He has an experience there. He gets something to go and he goes back to his um, college or where he's doing it. And he takes it and he starts having like visions of him as like a primate, like the first man. Like he's, he said he had visions of eating a goat raw and fighting other cavemen. You said, where? Oh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. So when he came out of the sensory deprivation tank, he had blood around his mouth and he couldn't talk because he didn't know how to talk anymore. After about an hour or so, he came back to normal and he explained. How long was he in the tank? Uh, for like four hours. That nigga would be in that tank for a long time, yo. A long time. I've got to. I've got to give you the name of this movie because this shit is crazy. Like, all right, so I'm gonna speed it up. He gets in the in the sensory deprivation tank like two more times, and then he does it alone without anybody there with him. One time he comes out of the tank and he's a monkey man. He he went back to his first. <laughs> oh no, home. he's in he's, Cino, man. <laughs> 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 he came out as a primate, like literally. He's got the bridged guy, uh, brow. He's got fur everywhere, and then he attacks a couple guards, beats them with rocks, and he runs through the streets and eats out of the trash. He gets chased by feral dogs. After a while, he comes back to normal. You a primate um, getting chased by dogs, man? That nigga, he was, he wasn't fully in tune. That's what it was. I mean, if you was in prehistoric times, a giant wolf was chasing you. You. Yeah, but he, he was at our time. He was at our he time fighting regular as city dogs. They go fuck is he well, yeah, about? he was in our time, but he thought he was an old time. So you just see a dog, your your instincts will kick in. Yeah, I mean, I look at him like, nah, hold up, this ain't that big nigga I'm used to. I'll violate. <laughs> Although like I'm sure when he was a monkey, he was, he was significantly stronger. Like so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So anyway, um, 
to my Obviously, the levels. people didn't believe him, so they had him do a CAT scan, and the nigga that did the x-ray said, are you joking with me? This is a gorilla x-ray. So that nigga body was like, are you joking with me? <laughs> nigga was, he, he was sitting there looking at it. He's like, all right, let's see what we got. What the fuck kind of head? Is, nigga, is this an ape? He said, bro, who, bro, give me the real x-ray. Stop fucking with me. He's yeah, like, oh, so not, not that's it. I'm not gonna break down the whole movie. Nigga, this is a monkey. Yeah, monkey. Not M O N K E Y either. It's M O N K E E. Yeah, M O K N E, and then it's capital M too. He's the first monkey. <laughs> but uh, this the original I'm not break down the whole movie. I just thought that was interesting to think about that we're all a part of the universe. We all have the universe in us. So what if there was a way to tap into the universe and say, go regress into something or go forward or, you know, turn into something? Like, we're all connected. It's just something interesting to think about like that. Yeah. I mean, it always makes me think, like, like when you hear about all these ancient um, civilizations, and even a lot of civilizations today, I mean, where a lot of them, you know, because think about it, when you think drug use, you think of, like, druggies. Right, like unfortunately, that's what they've associated with Perky. drugs. Right, you think of niggas who, oh, I'm strung out, I'm this, I'm that. But a lot of cultures used to use drugs to get closer to God, to to figure out their yeah, purpose, for religious reasons. Yeah, yeah, just to even just for growth. Yeah, yeah, philosophical reasons, just for like you know, I want to expand my brain. I want to see some shit I ain't never seen, think some shit I ain't never think before. I'm about to just eat the fuck out this mushroom, go sit in the woods, light a fire, and start drawing. Yeah, you know, like so, yeah. it, it, so. My thing is, I always think to myself, is like, again, how much of what these people are seeing is like what you were saying, right? Like, how much of what they're seeing is what they're pure, what pure the fantasy versus some of it is like, nah, nigga, you ain't never fantasized about no shit like this. This ain't even in your brain. I don't know where this you came from. You can't even comprehend the shit. This is real. So, yeah, no, I mean, I, I always think that's the... I mean, that's the argument with DMT. Some people think it's hallucinations, uh, hallucinations, and some people think no, I'm seeing some shit from a higher power. Niggas be talking about seeing beams of light and sacred geometric patterns. You don't really see that with LSD or mushrooms. That's like specific to DMT. And now imagine, like, you figure the, a lot of the indigenous communities were plugged into, like, you know, like solstices and that type of shit. So imagine you during an eclipse. Yeah, yeah, doing this time. during an eclipse or some shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, come on, bro. You not. <laughs> you got, like, bro. You have some acid and some some ayahuasca, or some shit, during during the lunar eclipse, my nigga, in the middle of the night with a full moon. Like, nah, bro, you're gonna lose your fucking mind. You're gonna see some shit. You're gonna lose your mind. You go, oh my god, oh shit, is that you? You said, is that you Michael Jackson from that. Thriller? I said, what the fuck is Thriller? Who the fuck is Michael Jackson? Who the fuck is Michael Jackson? What, what language are y'all niggas speaking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else like, what language are you niggas speaking? What the fuck? The nigga saw through a time rift off of fucking ayahuasca. Nigga learned English for 30 seconds. I that's I have no idea. I he said I don't I don't know how to I don't know what, what's going on. He's like, wow, that's crazy. Well say something. And then they go back to his native language, like, nah, I think it wore off. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I think he's done. And you can't even do it again because the time has passed. You had to do it at a specific time, at a specific place during a specific lunar event. Now it's over. So you gotta wait another seventy years. To it was like, damn, so my revelation was that Thriller's gonna be the best selling album of all time. And I'm not even gonna be allowed to listen to it. Like, damn. Yeah. They did say yeah. something about like a. Uh, I think they said it was gonna be like a magazine that they got bad joints in it or something like that. That's dope. That's damn. That my pause. Smoking this uh, CBD, quote unquote. Quote unquote. You might as well just said you were smoking a cigarette. No, nah, I would never say such a thing. Not even as a lie. Even if that's the legal option, nope. you not. I mean, weed is legal, so. Some places. Yeah, like the place I live. No, uh, yeah, we, I'm posting this exclusively for niggas in Georgia. Wait, is it wherever the shit is illegal? I think it's illegal in Georgia, probably. I think it's. Uh, I asked somebody too. I think it's 
if you have a medicinal card from somewhere else, it works in Georgia. I feel like in Atlanta, no, that matters, but it's illegal in Georgia. Yeah, no, Atlanta niggas don't give a fuck, but Georgia, they'll still lock your ass up. I don't Oh, yeah, yeah, outside of anywhere else and like some of the biggest spots. Yeah, them, them cops don't play. They looking for a reason. I used to be terrified for my life driving through Cobb County with a ounce of marijuana. I've gotten smoked for less. Niggas get smoked for falling through. For nothing. Not for driving through Cobb County. County. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to get it all. Um, all right, so boom, what else we got on here? We got the NFL games. Talk about the NFL and the fantasy and shit, man. Boy, yeah, oh boy. My first game, yeah. Is it a fantastic time to be a fucking Vikings fan? I say ironically. <laughs> because, you know, we find new and novel ways to give novel these games like away. Coronavirus? Novel, like new, brand new. Like, 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 like never before seen ways to lose these games. Wait, is um, that not what they, they mean when they say the novel coronavirus? I mean, new, like it's the new curve because there was a pre. There's, there's been no, no, no. I just That's why sure I say it's novel. It, right? yeah, 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 novel's just new. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, the Vikings losing overtime uh, on a missed field goal, a chip shot at that. Um, and if, what can I say, man? It's, it's more of the overtime? same. It's more, yeah, they made it to overtime against the Cardinals in a game where I felt like, yeah, Cardinals were probably gonna do away with us. But we we fought. We fought the whole game. Uh, Kirk Cousins played well, as he tends to do. Yeah, the Vikings' problem definitely is never Kirk Cousins. Niggas like to shit on him for whatever reason. Every like, once in a while it is. But that's the thing. Like, every yeah. once in a while it's going to be someone's Every fault. once in a while it's every quarter. Yeah, exactly. Every once in a while it's going to be Brady's or Mahomes' fault. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so... Mahomes to an interception last week. Yeah, yeah. Cost is, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, niggas are like, oh, well, his man's fumbled on the last drive. Yeah, but... Up yeah, 11, he did, he did. Pat Mahomes threw another interception that yeah, gave them exactly. momentum and a score. So, like, I get what you're saying. Ultimately, like, and that's the thing I always hate, right? Shit like this. People will look at this kicker and say, it's a chip shot. You got to make that chip shot. And, yeah, listen, but here's the other thing. The Vikings have had a terrible history with kickers, and you know this. You as a Vikings player know this. As a Vikings coach, you know this. As a Vikings fan, you know this. Everyone here knows this, right? So for you to then put your guy in a position, that falls on you. That's beyond him, right? It's just like, again, you know, like, yes, I pay my guy to do a certain thing. But I know under certain situations, every guy I paid to do this has somehow fucking crumbled. Every time. Every guy I paid. You're like the fifth or sixth, seventh, maybe eighth guy I've tried here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like every, like, I'm yeah, you, you look good. You look good, buddy. You made a 53-yarder last week to send us into it. Like, yeah, but I don't want to put you in that position. Still don't. And yet we do anyway, right? 40 seconds left. We were close. We could have took a shot at the end zone. Our offense was clicking, and we said, nah. Nah, sit on the ball, take a chip shot, field goal. Which, again, if we're talking like, oh, it's the smart coach and play, it's the guaranteed points way, but it's conservative. Go get that touchdown. You're playing the Cardinals. You're playing Kyler Murray, bro. Like, this is what I mean. I guess, like, perfect example is, and I hate to jump around with games, but in the Ravens-Chiefs game, right? You saw it on fourth down. Minutes some change up. They were going to punt the ball back to Pat Mahomes. That nigga Jim Harbaugh said, no, 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 hold up. Hold up. You, we going to go for this. We going to go for this because I don't want to give the ball back to you. This is not, you know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't make the conservative play. The conservative play would have been to go kick the little punt. And, hey, you got to go beat me. Go beat my defense and go up the whole field. Nigga, it's Pat Mahomes. He does that. And this is Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray can do that. So I'm not going to put Kyler Murray in a position to where, I had Kyler Murray, you going out and, uh, you know, Let's, let's take it to overtime. I want to see Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins in overtime. Like, no, nigga. But you, you don't, I assure you. you. You don't. But that's that's how we plan on that's how we plan on playing games. So it's bad. Uh, our defense it looks terrible, which is hilarious because we have a defensive coach. We got a bunch of defensive starters coming back. We had a couple injuries uh in our last game. That was why a lot of our starters weren't playing. But we have a cornerback on our team who is 80, 88th out of 89 cornerbacks in the league. Oh, my God. So he is arguably the worst cornerback in the league playing right now, which is crazy because he had a good year last year. But we have a guy on our bench, a rookie who was a rookie last year, at least, who, again, 80 out of 89. He couldn't possibly be, what, 89 out of 90? 90 out of 90? 
what are the chances he's that bad? Like, even if, if you're 88th, and this let's say this other guy is 50th. Nigga, that's significantly better. 60th. That's significantly better. Still, yeah. because he, to go from the worst to below average is, is, is a good improvement. It's a huge improvement. But our coach is not going to play. Like, you paid money for a guy, so it's like, well, I paid money for him. I ain't going to put him on the bench. If he stinks, bro, get him out of here. Yeah. You paid money for him, you got to eat it. You got to eat that. Like, it's just like, bro, like, like it'd be like, imagine paying money for a booty-ass charger court, and you're just going to keep trying to fuck with it anyway, even though you know this shit going to drain your battery. Like, no. Give it up. You got got. You were, you've been swindled, okay? So uh, move on and move forward. Yeah, you just got to hope for the best next time. Yeah, man. So, Vikings look bad. Uh, as for fantasy, I lost. Uh, I lost. I sure did lose this week. I you you won. I you won. All right. I'm in winning. Oh yeah, of course. The guy you played scored here. 85 points. Son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah that, that beat that ass. Uh, yeah, he had 85 points. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> he. <laughs> This is bad. I'm looking at his lineup, and it, it, I know he's sick too, because he's got niggas on his niggas on his bench that I wouldn't have started. That went off. Um, <laughs> yeah, Marquise yeah, I know he's Brown, sick. Mm-hmm. Marquise Brooks. Brown and Brandon Cooks went hammer, and even De- uh, Debo went, did good. But I wouldn't have played. Uh, I probably would have played maybe Debo, but I wouldn't have played Cooks. Although I probably would now. Running back got injured and scored zero. I love that for me. Yeah, Josh Jacobs had nothing. Hey, Tyler Hickby had 1.8, so we're about even there. Mm-hmm. No. No, he had a guy who had scored zero, dog. Y'all not even. <laughs> 1.8 might as well be zero. It's crazy because it's not. <laughs> it's it's literally, well it's zero. almost two higher than zero. Almost. Not quite. Yeah, but, but it is quite a dub, isn't it? That it is. That it is. Yeah, I took my team last year. I don't or last month. I don't, last week, excuse me. Damn, what the fuck? I don't know who I can switch out because my team is just it's even from the bench to the field. There's not a lot of difference between all of my people. Yeah, I've been looking for trades. The problem I'm having is that based on who has what, like the niggas I need, I can't really offer certain things to these people. Like I was like, all right, I seen backs. I was like, all right, maybe I'm going to get a back from Reef. But then it's like, all right, he has backs I want. But in terms of what I would have that he would need or want, I don't think I have anything. You know what I mean? So then it's just like, all right, so what the fuck do I offer you to convince you to give up a back that you can obviously tell? Like, you think about it. You're not getting anything back you need. So anything you get back has to be like a, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah, all right. Same. I'm going to think about the same thing. That's why I just need. My people to just turn Before, up. Yeah. <laughs> I have DK Metcalf. He was my wide receiver one because I was ninth in the draft. I got Zeke, but he's not doing No, shit. I mean, you have a good team. It's just production, right? Like, you got Metcalf, right? Like, hold on, let me run the teams down, right? So, you got Tom Brady. Good start. You got Metcalf, Allen Robinson. That's at least two wide receiver twos. Allen Robinson is a wide receiver one to me. Well, he is a wide receiver one, so he that's fine. Been, you got Zeke. No, I know he hasn't. I'm talking about what he is. Yeah, he ain't putting the numbers up, but we know what he is. Zeke, same thing. Zeke's RB one. He ain't putting no RB1. numbers up. Though. Chris Carson is probably say an RB two, and he has what did he put twenty seven? Yeah, he's put up RB two numbers. Uh, and then so that's the thing. So. Realistically, you have Mike Davis. Funny shit is Mike Davis has he's been underperforming because he's a starter and starting back. Although yeah, I can't really say that. He had 10, he had 13. On my flex. But when I had him on my flex the first week. Yeah, Ted, that's not bad. I can see why you would swap him out, though. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like, come on, 10, bro. <laughs> 10. First week, I had him on my flex and Chase Evans on the bench and Chase Evans dropped 14. So I put in Chase Evans this week. And he dropped 12. So I mean. Yeah, and that's why I say it's not really much difference between my bench and my starters because Mike Davis did 13 this week. Yeah, I think so far no one's go- like no one's really going ape shit. Like Cooper Cup had his crazy games, but no one's going ape shit. So it's hard to like 
Cooper Cup and Aid and uh, Aaron Jones. That's it. Yeah, Cooper Cup went oh, ape shit. Oh, Aaron Jones went ape shit. And Derrick Henry went ape shit, right? And even Amari had that one game where he went ape shit, right? Yeah. But then other than that, it's like no one's going fucking crazy. Like Joe Mixon is having a better season right now than a lot of running backs that went way higher than him. Very surprised about that. Who has Joe Mixon, I believe? I have no idea. I stayed away from him, though, because I've had him in the past, and it's it's, it's been rough. I was planning on getting him, like, when I saw how late he went. Mm-hmm. But somebody still got him. Yeah, so I, I read off your team. My team is uh, Josh Allen, Devontae Adams, uh, Stephon Josh Diggs. Josh Allen hasn't been doing like last he year. Has not. He has not. He has 17 and 17. Score. I mean, that's not bad, but for a quarterback, isn't it? For a quarterback, that's terrible. Biggest projected yeah. for like 20, 23, 22. Last Devontae, again, has, up has put up 10 and 20, points. which is the 20 is fine. 20 is great. I got cooked that week, so it didn't matter. Stephon I mean, that, is at 15 and 16. 10, that was just a bad week for Green Bay overall. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing he got 10 when they scored three points. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I have Naeem Hines, Miles Sanders, uh, Darren Waller, and T. Higgins. Now, the issue is my the running back I drafted is James Robinson off the Jags, and that nigga hasn't done any damn thing. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, all right, well, Travis Etienne out. Okay, yeah, he'll get the more of a load. And, like, the game one, he has, like, nine touches. And I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? And they're like, well, we were behind all game. I'm like, so what? Give him the ball. Throw him a pass. Yeah. Like, to me, I, I, I don't honestly – like, I know how they have, like, passing down backs versus power backs and all that shit, right? But, did like – Did you pick up Tony Pollard? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, 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 I had to. I was – yeah, I seen him in – yeah, I ain't gonna hold you. Is... After his week one performance, if I was you, I probably would have handcuffed uh, Zeke because the way Zeke is looking right now, they looking like they might either split it or just outright give it to Tony if he just keeps performing. Not... Because to me, I don't care how much money you pay Zeke. Tony Pollard's doing it. Yeah, he's he's doing it now. If the one two punch is what you need, then keep it fifty fifty. Cool. That's not good for Zeke, obviously, but um, I need something. I need something from my back. So. Welcome Imagine to the... picked up Christian Kirk because I was thinking about picking him up. After I saw that, you know what? He does this every year. Last yeah, year, I, know, I fell into the same trap. I didn't even start him neither, though, because I was oh, like, nah, I ain't going to start him yet. I don't necessarily even need him. I just wanted another receiver because T. Higgins got injured. Yeah. He he does this every year. One week, he'll drop 24. Next week, 7. Yeah, Next we week, got to that 3. 3.8. We got to that 32. Yeah. And then 17. Wait, whoa, whoa. Four. Every oh week God. that he goes off is going to be the week that you have him on the bench. Every week he drops a four is when you're going to have him in. It's the fucking Christian Kirk trap, and I fall. Well, I usually fall for it. So that, that's I really the. Before I did. That's really the Will Fuller trap. That's the Will Fuller <laughs> trap for sure. Like historically speaking, that is a hundred percent the Will Fuller play. Will Fuller will come out, drop thirty eight, followed by a twenty nine, and then not play another game that season. Yeah, that's uh. Nigga, come out here. Hold up. About to have 160 receiving yards and two touchdowns on you, niggas. Who picked you him like, up? You like, damn. Kendall picked him up. Yeah, Kendall, girl. Why is he not playing? It says he's healthy. He's suspended. What for? Um, I think that it said PEDs. I think it was whatever he was using to recover from his injury. To me, I'm like, man, look, I don't, I don't care about these niggas using that shit to recover, bro. Like, think about how y'all got these games structured. And look, get these niggas on the field. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, get them on the field. And if everybody doing it, there's no advantage. Literally. And he's using to recover. It's not like he's taking performance enhancing drugs. That nigga was injured, and he's yeah. And then they're like, well, no, think about it, because if it enhances your recovery. Your recovery is part of the performance of last uh, next game. So I'm like, bro, so basically you telling me niggas not recovering from previous games is part of the game? Like, I, it, it is. But, like, does it have to be? Like, we can phase that out, right? Like, you could actually literally control for that. You could allow these niggas to do what they do. You'd come up with all the shit that they use, figure out what's good, what's not, put some money behind the science and all this other shit. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Niggas, but I get it. Like, again, 
when you're that big, you just don't want to make any moves at all. Like making big moves when you're big already, it's just it's like that's why you see so many of these big companies. They're so slow to do anything because they're just like, eh, we got to run this up the chain and then it's got to go to so-and-so and then he's got to approve on it and then it's got to get forwarded to the council and then the council has to decide on it. They got to vote. That's going to take two weeks. And then they come back to us with recommendations. We have to implement the recommendations and submit it again. Then it has to get ran up. Like, yeah, you know I mean? it's like so much bullshit and yeah. just tape, like red tape where it's like, my nigga, it would take us four or five months just to even get this heard. Let alone get it approved and then actually do it. Like, nah, nigga. It's like, nah, that's I'm good. Don't be getting done. But that's also what pisses me off when you got niggas who are like are at the helm of their shit. And it's like, all right, nigga, you can circumvent that. They can't. I understand they can't. You can't. Like, y'all niggas, some of these niggas be CEOs and be acting like, ah, you know, I just, just, you know, if I could pay niggas a living wage, I would, you know, you know, I would. But it's just, it's above me. It's out of my hands. You know, it's like, nigga, up. it is not out of your hands. You are the CEO. If I could pay niggas a living wage, I would. That reminds me of some shit that I read literally yesterday. Um, it was some fucking asshole dickhead on Reddit saying that um, that's my they're burn. getting Austrian um, interns for an IT position, and they're wondering how could they legally pay them uh american minimum wage because they said in good conscience i can't pay them the austrian minimum wage which is twenty dollars they want to pay them seven dollars and fifty cents instead of twenty dollars and they had the nerve to say in good conscience in good conscience i can't pay uh, yeah as if his conscience had anything to do with why he wanted to n- avoid paying niggas that much money like no niggas are sick in the head in in saying in good conscience just shows me how evil of a nigga you really are. Mm-hmm. You are because you would literally, <laughs> you would bring morality into a conversation. That truthfully, I, to me, I it always feel like it's, morality. it's it's not even a moral conversation when we talk about what you pay niggas, right? Like to me, my whole thing is it's just about paying value, right? And in a lot of these situations, in most situations, I would argue even at McDonald's from everywhere, the servers, the niggas making two seventy five plus tips. The value you placed on me is grossly mis, mis- misrepresented. It's grossly under what it is. Because, like, my thing is, even if you figure, let's say the real value of a, a um, fuck, of a server is, like, you know, state minimum wage plus tips. My nigga, you got to understand, for some people who make 275 their whole life doing this, that changes the game. They go from 275 plus tips to now nine something plus tips. You know what I mean? Eight something that's plus tips. Yeah, no, no, don't get me wrong. That may not necessarily be enough, quote unquote. But that's the crazy it's thing. It's a start. It helps. It's a drastic improvement, and as a company, it barely costs because you were already paying them so little. Yeah, you were already paying them so little. Like say before, they were eight percent of your budget. Now, now the the wages is what like eleven percent of your budget. Like nigga, 11%. yeah, come on, bro. And the niggas at the top will sit there and fucking belly aching cry and saying how much money they're losing from. Yeah, and then meanwhile, like, your company's probably money. growing because your employees feel better. They're having a better time. They're like, wow, I'm actually getting paid at least somewhat what I'm worth. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, bro, that's the thing that be killing me. Where, but that's how you know it's not to them. It's not a moral. Even it's, it's not a moral conversation. It's just numbers. It's just money. Yeah. And they're just like, well, you do the same, and I'm like, no, they don't no even I see do the people. They just see the numbers. They see yeah, no. versus eleven percent. And that's the thing. People always talk about good business and bad business, blah blah. And I'm like, you gotta understand. There's a difference between good business and literally good financial practice, right? Like those aren't the same thing. Like, and and good financial practice again is not the same thing as doing the right thing or or doing something decent. You know, because my thing is, there's always a middle ground. You can always like, all right, if I wanted to beat these niggas over the head, what could I charge them? All right, this is the number. If I wanted to be a savior, what could I give these niggas? That's the number. All right, what's some reasonable number in a scale somewhere in between these two? Not leaning like 80% one way. You know what I mean? Like, let's find some reason. And and I promise you, whatever that number is, it's still higher than the number they give niggas. Because they're not having that conversation at all. It's not even about, like, should I give y'all niggas anything? It's like, no, I'm giving y'all something. It's a job. Y'all should be grateful for that. And it's like, bro, you pay me three seventy five plus tips. I should be grateful for that? Yeah, exactly. Honestly, truthfully. You saying I should be grateful And I work 45 hours a week for you? I work 45 hours a week for you. Think about it. 
Now imagine that same nigga working them same hours, but he's getting eight plus tips. Bro, he's making two times what he just made. He's fine with this now. This is a whole different Probably job for him. Too, yeah, man. this is a whole different job for him yeah, now. At that point, a nigga looking like a shit. I was talking about a six month plan, but shit, I might have to expand that to eighteen. I might stay here another year. This is comfortable. I do what I want to do. Like that's my whole thing. Like same thing with like McDonald's and all that. Niggas was saying you shouldn't pay them niggas fifteen and all that shit. And I'm like, why shouldn't you? Like. McDonald's can afford it. It's nothing for them. Because the niggas don't want to be there for seven twenty-five. Yeah, I, bro. When I worked at McDonald's, that's what it came down to. It, a lot of times, I was really thinking to myself, like, bro, I make nine dollars an hour, and you're a beast. About what, dog? Fucking onions. Onions, bro. You gotta understand the burger, your meal you bought is more than I make in an hour. I don't fucking care. I don't care, dog. You bought a large <laughs> Big Mac meal, and that's more than I made in an hour. And you're bitching about onions on I don't care, dog. I don't like it. And that's the thing. Like, there's always a saying you get what you pay for, right? And it always applies to a lot of things, but it never seems to apply for labor. I don't wonder why that is. All right. Like, so it's like, bro, like you paid an artist, yo. Um, like imagine, right? Like, we looking for a nigga to do graphics and shit for the pod and all that. We like, all right, um, let's see, you gotta do a Twitter joint, you gotta do a YouTube one. You got to do uh, something for Twitch. You're going to do a little banner for this. You're going to do a couple drawings for that. I could probably give you like 25 for all that. He's like, bro, what you, what? 25? And he's like, yeah, because I'm figuring like, you know, like all that shit like. I could do it all myself. And I'm like, all right, nah. If it working like that, then nigga, do it yourself. Yeah, otherwise, you paying me for my time, my labor, all of that shit. And so that's the thing, like, especially with art. Like, that's one of the things where people, the numbers get fucking wonky real like if artists charge y'all what they really should be charging y'all niggas would not be selling and they wouldn't be buying art neither yeah like because you gotta understand like some niggas will put 10 hours into a piece and you figure what's a decent again if we just gonna go off of your statement and wait let's say it's ten dollars an hour it should be a hundred dollars for that piece chances are i'm selling that piece for 50 60 or 70 it ain't going for a hundred because it's like, all right, it took me 10 hours. Yeah, but like, bro, I can't realistically sell this to niggas for 250 You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just not going to buy this for 250 Unless I'm a nigga who's known. Like, unless I got a huge name or I got a co-sign from somebody. And exactly. then those are the people who get into the territory where they just start scamming. Right? That's where you get into the Virgil shit where it's like, all right, I'm going to just put in the le- least amount of effort as possible. Jack up the margins as much as possible. And make my money. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, bro, come on, son. Y'all got to do better. They won't. Ooh, they won't, but... Yeah, I remember I was talking to... um, I was talking to somebody the other day. And they was talking about... uh, Like, you know how, like, when niggas do them dumbass what-ifs and, like, all the goofy ones and all that other shit? Uh, and they they... Gave one where they were saying, would you rather have a million dollars or the ability or or um enhance regenerative abilities? And I started thinking to myself, okay, I was like, all right, now I don't know how far you can go with enhance you can make some money, regenerative bro. abilities, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, okay, see now this is a good one. I'm gonna sell my kidneys. I was like, see, see, now this is a good one because I don't know how enhanced they are, but even if they're just like regular enhanced, like maybe I'm not like super clone man or some silly shit, right? But like, I'm just like Wolverine. That's what I'm claiming. He said that's what I'm claiming. (laughs) That's nah. That's that's gonna cost more than a milli. Nah, you can't get that. That's gonna cost more than a milli for a milli. You get. Give me Spider Man. He'd be healing, but he's not like Deadpool or Wolverine. He'd be, yeah. his ass be, he'd be out of commission for a little bit. So if I cut my kidney out, it's going to take a few days, maybe a week or two for it to grow back. This nigga like an NFL player. He's like, look, bro, I broke my ankle, but I, I can get back in like two weeks. You're like, two weeks? Wow, okay. I mean, he think about it. He's still, he's still sidelined, but nigga, hey, two weeks? That's why niggas stay getting injured. They be coming back too early trying to play. Well, you got to understand. Some of them niggas, they don't got... Again, it's not the NBA where money's guaranteed, right? Like, And so the problem True. with the NFL is that my money not guaranteed. I'm on a contract year. If I don't prove I that play. I'm 
Yeah, if I don't prove I'm, I'm worth, worth a contract, I can't get a contract next season. Yeah. So now I fuck my leg up. Nah, and even your coach might even be the nigga like, yo, just sit down, just relax. That's bro. fucked just... up considering NFL is 30 times more contact based than basketball. But you know why? The NFL, it's it's about um know, like we've the... been over this. It wasn't on the podcast though, but we've been through this. Yeah, it's like like the like the NFL runs this league like a different way than in the NBA, even MLB and like a lot of them other leagues are being forced to deal with these type of things. And they're having to move and shift. And I would argue that the NFL has probably been the least progressive of every one of them. Like, I, I don't know what the NHL is doing. I, I imagine it's better than what the NFL is doing. I've personally seen shit. The MLB is doing that's better than what the NFL is doing. NBA obviously is a hundred times better than them. The WNBA obviously it's a subsidiary subsidiary of the NBA, so same thing. But it's like, dog, the NFL is like in the Stone Ages, right? Like, think about it. They they increase it to seventeen weeks this year, and they don't even think to themselves, okay, well, if I made it seventeen games, increased, right? What if I kept it and gave you two bye weeks and just made it week eighteen? Why don't I just do that? Right, like that makes more sense from a player perspective because the players, you got two bye weeks. You always have a bye week before a Thursday game. You know what I'm saying? Like you can make sure the games are better. You can make sure the teams perform better. But they don't care, right? Because they're looking like, nah, we just want an extra game so we can get some more ad revenue and some more contracts and some more. And you're just like, that's it. Okay, let's make it work then. Like that's the other part, though, right? Let's make it work then. Okay, let's get an extra game in. But let's make this extra game work. And they're like, no, it already works, buddy. We already got it to work. We signed the deal. It already works. You're like, okay, but you're we're playing an extra game with with no extra bye week. You see how like do you see how a 17 game season from a team that has their bye week in week three would be a problem? Do you see how that would work? Huh. Them niggas are stressed. Yeah, them niggas getting an early break, and boy, you better get ready. Cause for the next three months, nigga, you are playing ball. Yeah, there's no way. I so, and that's the thing. So, like with the NFL, it's just them niggas is in the Stone Age with that shit. And I mean, remember uh, what was it like four or five months ago? We were talking about how the NFL doesn't take care of their CTE people. It was something specific. There was like a, it was a whole thing where um, they weren't insured or something. I don't remember what it was, but it was bad. Well, there was a couple they made different this shit things. Seemed like almost slavery. There was obviously like, like they they did some research and they seen some things that they kind of withheld. So that was one, right? Two was they fought long and hard to not pay those niggas, knowing what they were concealing, right? Like and then yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's like that's, that's really the it. that's the nail. That's yeah. the before anything else, anything. I don't I don't need to see seventeen weeks to know that that right there is the nail. Like my nigga, you fought like again. Even tobacco on them niggas, when they got caught, they had to eat shit. You had to eat crow. They just You just had to eat crow. That's just what it worked. Now, they and still bounce back. Like, they bounce back because they're billionaires. Duh. They're always going to bounce back. But they had to eat crow. NFL said, I ain't eating shit. I, I ain't eating niggas. nothing. Fuck that. Well, I go play. Uh-uh. The, the, the ruling on the field is under further review. You're like, bro, what are we reviewing? What are we reviewing? You had evidence withheld it and then fought against it knowing the evidence you had if you didn't have the evidence right right yeah exactly now if you had never studied this and you just didn't want to pay this we would say all right well then at least study it right then you'd have an excuse to drag your feet but nigga you still gotta eat crow when we finally catch it i'm not gonna hold you i'm obviously not in support of nfl but why would they even tell them to study it what do you mean no, I'm this saying, like, a, if they hadn't studied it already no, and hadn't okay. been withholding that information it, it, it already, that's what would have happened. Yeah, okay. Right? Like, because then they would have been like, all right, well, no one knows for sure. We can all assume niggas cracking their fucking heads against each other is not good. But we don't know CT. We don't that's know about it for sure. Knowledge. Yeah, right, right, yeah. And that's how niggas usually get away with it. Well, how can we have known? And I'm like, dog, niggas was slamming their leather fucking helmets into each other. For 13 years, and you ain't think maybe one of these niggas is insane. One of these niggas, oh. one of these niggas lost so much gray matter. Gray matter, his shit is smooth. Well, there's first off, there is so many niggas in the NFL that are fucking absolute bonkers, insane. But there's so many of these niggas that have perpetrated violence because they were insane. And there's so many niggas that have perpetrated violence and said. 
this is because of all the damage I took in the NFL. It made me insane. Niggas have come out and said, I'm not the same person before I oh, slammed yeah. my helmet into and so it and so said, Like when you yeah. when you trace certain niggas shit back to like when you trace it all the way back to the root, I'm talking from birth. It all makes sense. And the NFL is the crowning jewel in all of it, right? Like, because think about it. You were born from birth. Ah, right, you probably lived in a crib and you might have lead in your water. Damn. Might have had lead in the paint. Damn. So starting from there already, right? Starting from there. Then the air fucked up. Damn. Water quality fucked up. Damn. You ain't really eating the best food. Damn. All right, cool. You're going to schools. Psychology, your mindset ain't really right because, you know, these schools ain't really shit. Damn. Right? So it's all this shit that, that before you ever even see the NFL, Right? And then you start playing football, right? So now you start hitting niggas and you start cracking niggas. Damn, add, add four years of that through high school and then maybe two years in college and add all of that. Damn, you finally get to the NFL. And now you got the fastest, strongest, quickest head crackers in the fucking universe, nigga. In the universe. Boy, these are head hunters, nigga. Every single one of these niggas is a visionary. So now what? Right, and then you talking about one year, two year, three years, back to back games, Thursday night game on four days rest, this and that, blah blah. It's like dog, nigga, this you take almost you, set up again. Yeah, exactly. It is. It is again. Take a perfect person, right, who lived in a pristine neighborhood, had the freshest water, the most beautiful air quality, the 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 most delicious food, the greatest training facility. Take that guy, put him in the league for thirteen years, and he still probably comes out fucked up. So what do you think happens you know, to Peyton Manning do be talking a little bit slow on them nationwide? <laughs> <laughs> right? So so you tell me what you think happens to regular everyday Americans who come from regular everyday struggles and have to deal with regular everyday shit who then, oh yeah, and by the way, I hit niggas really fucking hard for 16 years of my life. For some niggas, shit. They don't even get 16. Some niggas yeah. don't get 16, bro. They played two years in high school, went to college, played two years, got to the NFL, played one and a half, and said, bro, my fucking brain hurts. I can't do this shit no more. Bro, did you see this? That Frank Gore is retiring from the NFL to focus on boxing? I just, oh, man, niggas I in the comments were saying, please oh, save no. some of the CTE for the rest of us, bro. I didn't see that. No, Frank, baby, listen. <laughs> Frank, bro. Listen, I love Frank Gore, man, but don't, don't do that, Frank. Please. Please, right? I mean, all right, do it exhibitions if you're going to do it. Like, do the little trailer shit that they're doing. If you're going to do that wave, all right, cool. Get your money. Get your bag. Get your bag. I ain't mad at you. That nigga said he was seriously training. I, don't I know. know. The, well, no, you can seriously know. train for them fights. I, I'm not mad. I I'm hope. I'm not to seriously train to fight Jake Paul. I'm sorry. I would seriously train for 500000 Nigga, that's a... Oh, yeah. Bro, I mean, you yeah, you looking at it the wrong way. You looking at it the wrong way. You not I'm not training for the whatever TikToker I'm about to beat. I'm not training for this TikTok nigga. I'm about to watch. I'm training I'm for training the seven hundred thousand dollar bag yeah. I'm about to get. Nigga, that's what it because I got fair. to get it. But that's the funny thing about them fights, man. I'm like, look, if we're gonna get into that area. Remember when we, you know it's funny? I think Soldier Boy was Soldier Boy was one of the first niggas who was trying to fight niggas, right? I he mean trying to fight Chris Brown like fucking seven years ago. Yeah, I mean, but we do need to bring that back, right? We need. I want to see celebrities get it shaking. Yeah, I, I want to see, see real that. celebrities. I'm not trying to see Lamar Odom fight Aaron James. Yeah, nah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to see, like, and again, and no respect to none of these niggas, but it's like, I'm not trying to see aging stars who, like, look, all right, it's a chance for me to get that one more 50K. Come on, I can get that 50K easy, right? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, yeah, all right. It nah. actually sounds kind of desperate and sad. This making me sad to think about. No, it is. But you got to understand, it's an easy bag for whoever's involved. It is. Especially it is. if I'm Lamar Wood and fighting Aaron Carter, nigga. What? It's like he watched him, nigga. What? <laughs> Bro, listen, they're like, all right. And think about it. Matt, you said the negotiations. Why Aaron Carter even t- – <laughs> well, I mean, he took it for the bag, but – Exactly. He was same reason. Shit, like, he had a chance. Oh, yeah. Well, that – I think that just you gotta sell you, know, you gotta put on a show. Yeah, you gotta sell yeah. a fight. But that's my thing. You sit in negotiations and say you doing the number, you like, my nigga, I'm about to make 125000 at least. To either punch three times or get punched. Yeah, to times. either knock Aaron Carter the fuck out or just just dance around. Cause he ain't gonna knock me out. <laughs> you know, wait, he so just me. Yeah, so it's like, bro, I'm I'm really getting paid to just you know what I'm saying? So it's like I don't mind that. Like I, it is desperate. It is like the cash grab shit, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's not. A, but it's still sad. But to me, I wouldn't even say it's necessarily desperate. It's a cash grab. Not every cash yeah. grab is desperate, right? Like no, I no, think. I'm, not a, I'm just saying. Yeah, it's yeah. Sad. You think about what's what's making it sad for me is you said the word specifically aging stars. 
So I'm thinking mm-hmm. about like old niggas past their prime. They're not really getting work no more. This they're getting a shot at some money and they gotta take it because you know the world yeah. running dry. And it's just yeah, That's and it's one of them things be. where it's like, look, bro, I presented the perfect opportunity to you. You'd be stupid to turn us down. Like yeah, that's what it is. That's, that's essentially what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like a nigga, a nigga, like a nigga came to you with the play. He described the whole play to you, and you just in your head, like, damn, this shit sound perfect. Okay. I mean <laughs> I really got no downsides to this. Hold on, wait. Hey, I wanna know Carter. who put who put that fight together? Who put Aaron Carter against Lamar Odom? And and how did you get a green lit? That's what I wanna know. I wanna Aaron know who Carter put it together. Like, what, five, seven? I want to know how a nigga said, okay, Aaron Carter. Who, hold on, remind me who Aaron Carter is? Nigga put on a little video said, okay. Lamar Odom. Oh, you ain't got to remind me who Lamar Odom is. Okay. He started thinking like, all right, how the fuck is this going to work? Like, bro, how, how do you get that green lip? Six foot nine nigga versus five foot seven nigga. How do you get that green lip? Heavyweight just... versus what? Lightweight? Featherweight? Oh, I don't know. How does this work? But now I think it's like the celebrity boxing... That might not work because I think a lot of niggas are afraid to, to actually fight. Like they don't want to fight because oh, it's, it's a lot of ego. Like, versus Aaron Carter. That's what they should? Aaron. That would be interesting. That would be um, Macaulay Culkin not fighting shit though. He not. He not. Yeah. He, he ain't interested. I mean, he wouldn't they, take they, that they, offer. Like they were presented to him like, "Yo, yo, it's the perfect play." He'd be like, "Nah, I'm good." I feel like he <laughs> managed his money well. He still got his home alone money. I feel like even if he didn't manage his money well, he wouldn't take that. <laughs> That's one of the ones where he's just like, "I'm not about to train." <laughs> for four yeah, I can't see that I'm not. I'm see. just not. I'm. I'm training. good. No. He's like. I'm good, bro. I don't. I'm not about to spend five months training for a bag. I'm not doing that. I'm, not, I'm just not gonna I do it. Seen that nigga in any type of media. It was a commercial where a nigga was in his underwear and a roll of noodles. I can't see the nigga training for five months to box. And don't get me wrong. He, I'm sure, nigga. You an actor. You got the dedication and all that shit to do it. And niggas is just like. I'm just not interested. I don't want to do that. Like he's the nigga. Who's very simple. Look, I don't want to do it. So it's really what it comes down to. Else. Like, it's an easy pass. He said they went to a first, and Lamar Odom was the best they could get to. <laughs> <laughs> there was that, that was the shit where they were making calls. And Lamar Odom was walking by. He was like, "Oh shit, hold up. they looking for oh, somebody." Lamar Odom. He said, "Oh hey, hey, look, it's Lamar Odom." And he's like, "Yo, I'm on the phone right now." Damn. And then it clicked. Wait a minute. I'll call you right back. <laughs> Nigga ran outside. Hey, Lamar, my man. What do I have yeah, something I for you? you? I really want to know how they green with that. Like that nigga is five foot nothing, and Lamar Odom. Was... He's an NBA champion. Like, or maybe <laughs> what is maybe wrong just, with niggas? He, maybe he's not even that short. He just looks small compared to Lamar Odom. I I gotta look up Aaron Carter's height. He probably he like six foot short. maybe, but it don't matter because Lamar Odom was a, a stretch four. He was like six seven. This is not right. It's it's not right. <laughs> not right, bro. Oh man, this nigga is five foot eight. Oh no, well, bro, what's that? That's, that's like that's like Waka Flocka fighting Tory Lanes, nigga. Like, stop it. That's <laughs> it's not a good look. <laughs> it's not a good look, my nigga. Lamar Odom is six ten. Six ten. I was look. I cheated. <laughs> I said six seven. Six ten. Oh man, how much did he weigh? Two twenty nine. Uh, yeah. So no, stop it. That's that's not right, man. But like that's what I'm saying. So I don't think the boxing would be it. But I do think like so they need like celebrity competition events. Like almost like you remember like when we used to do like the field day shit out in school yeah. or that type of. Do you like put celebrities a celebrity with hole in the wall? Yeah. Um. What was that other shit? What was the shit they used to have in the '80s where they used to have like the um the net the battle of the network stars type shit. You know oh, what I'm talking about? Celebrity Gladiator or something? Yeah, like them. Yeah, Celebrity Gladiator, Battle of Network, all that type Star of shit. Search? What was the shit where they had the boxes with the X's and O's and they used to knock each other out? Oh, I don't even. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the. Uh, literally, it was called Battle of the Networks. And it was like they had niggas from ABC, niggas from CBS. Oh. Niggas like it was, it was nutty. But they had the celebrities on those networks, right? Like if you yeah. were the major dude on CBS, you're like, all right, fuck it. I'm on the CBS uh, soap they opera. Had, uh, celebrity Ninja Warrior. I don't know about ninja i think celebrity i think it's got to be like mundane shit like you know what i'm saying like because you gotta understand all these celebrities can't fight all these celebrities can't climb like i it's just not some shit i'm interested in seeing all of you niggas i don't want to see P B rock try to do <laughs> i don't want to see that i don't want to witness a boogie try to cr- cr- crawl up a half pipe 
All right, bring back Nickelodeon. Have celebrities do slime. Yeah, do, or do like the guts. Remember guts from back in the day? Yeah, guts. yeah. Do yeah. some shit like that, or like Legends of the Hidden Temple, but celebrity like that should have worked. That should have be crap. Niggas don't have the ideas that we do, so this is none of this. No, nah, they do. Mission. They do. It's just like you gotta understand these niggas. I think, well, like I said, if they do, then why would you pass up on free money? Because these are great ideas. But I think it's the same way I was saying this before. It's like these companies, bro. You have to clear so many chains, okay. and you have to yeah. do this. You got to go through that. You got to. And so, like, if you don't have an inside in, you just it don't matter what your idea is. Ideas be dying in the writers' room because they know oh, they're not gonna go for that. And or even think about down. it. If I'm a writer, and let's say I know I got a novel ass idea, and not only are you niggas gonna fade me, but then y'all gonna steal the idea and use it later. Nah, fuck that. I'll just keep it. Yeah. I'll keep it in the tuck. Cause that's usually what probably ends up happening. They'll see something like you present it to like yeah, 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 your manager, like, yo, yo, hold on, let me, let me talk to you real quick. I got some shit, right? It's like boom, boom, you break the whole thing. He, he, he know, like, okay, yeah, this is some crack. This is definitely like, this is some crack. Like, yeah, I they not gonna go for this, but this is some crack. And if I say it later, they might go for it. Yeah, they might go for it. If I take credit for it later, act like it's me. Yeah, they might go for this shit. So he gonna keep that in the tuck. And nah, no, 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 no. I'm gonna keep that in my tuck, nigga. It's crazy too because you can't even patent an idea like that because you work for the company. Mm -hmm. And if they got like a contract, yeah, and then yep. go and try to sell, sell it somewhere, yeah. nobody can take it because you patent it. But you can't go into a company that you already worked at and patent it. I already patented this game show. Nigga, you work for us. That's ours. Yeah, like about? anything you, you create. Writer, you yeah, most of them have for those us. contracts where like anything you create under underneath our umbrella is ours, right? So some of them, like that's one of the ones. Like I was saying, that's the type of shit you create on your own and you don't never let them know about. That's that's just yeah. you keep that shit totally off the table because let you and pitch one the day idea. It'll hit the light of day. Hopefully. Yeah, because the problem is let you be the nigga who pitched the idea to them and they took it and then they stole it from you, right? And then you come out like, oh, no, nah, I was working on this shit for a minute, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, word? Get fired, oh, word? The NBA and all types yeah, of and they was like, wait, hold on. So you was working on it while you was working for us, huh? That's what it sound like. Mm -hmm. And you know what that would mean, right? If you was working on it while you was with us, you know what that would mean, right? <laughs> but, but that's not true, and you know it. And <laughs> <laughs> your saddest, most depressed. <laughs> yeah, most word. That's not the truth. They, he knows that's not the truth. With it. Nigga, dude, that's the shit where he did a little bow wow shit where he was waving his thing. <laughs> he said, uh huh. Yeah. What you gonna do about it? All right, man. What what time is it? We've been in here for fucking forever. I put us in a time loop. Yeah. We almost said we almost said so. two hours. I think uh I think we're ready to just about uh, wrap this one up, man. Uh it's been good. I can't name a thing we talked about today. Uh, probably because I smoked during the pod. I don't usually do that. We definitely talked about shit. Nah, I usually like I don't do this. Yeah, nah, we talked about a decent amount of stuff. I remember we talked about them. No, no, no. We literally talked about shit. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. We actually talked about fecology, which is what I'm calling it. I got called something better. Scat science. You know, every time I, all right, so you said every time you think about scat science, you think about that song, I'm scat, man. It makes me think about that movie with Martin Lawrence and the white dude from Shawshank Redemption where he had the spider in his shirt and he was like dancing around trying to get the spider out. That song was playing while he was trying to get the spider out. I'm screaming. I don't you remember that, that song. Uh, I don't fucking know. I've seen Martin's movies mostly, but you gotta say, I watch movies once and forget about them. Like that's the type Jesus. of yeah. Oh, like, it's called nothing to lose. Spider scat man scene. He shuts his shoes on. Fuck. Yeah, I'm about to send this to you. This shit is fucking hilarious. I used to watch this shit on repeat as a kid. He used to have me dying laughing. No, nah, I remember that scat man from the funny shit. Is I remember I discovered Ella Fitzgerald because of fucking Newgrounds. That was the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. We discovered some of the most profound, prolific shit in my entire life from. Shit post or adult swim. Yeah, or yeah, literally. Game. Like, mind you, I'm like a kid, and like, you know, my parents, they didn't necessarily play jazz. They play like old school, like soul music and RB, but like, nigga, my parents yeah, wasn't just, yeah, like, the they, was, yeah they wasn't just playing Duke Duke Ellington and shit in the crib <laughs> or Miles I, Davis. Some niggas do. Because I was in jazz band and 
elementary school. Uh, he was also in, you know, the the Negro Academy. So, imagine you remember that the Negro Academy. Yeah, the Negro, the Nebuchadnezzar Academy. It was called Timbuktu. Oh, okay. Timbuktu is a real place, right? No. Yeah, that's what they named it after. It's a college in Africa. I'd always heard some. I remember hearing Timbuktu in some Max, songs. They put in a song, yeah. One of them old, uh, some old Yankee uh, propaganda song. Probably some niggas from Jurassic Five mentioned Timbuktu. The niggas was talking about Africa a lot. <laughs> Africa, Bambaataa, the Zulu Nation. You know them niggas. So they got the Timbuktu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see you in the streets. I can't trust you. <laughs> Yo, I, I always think about myself, if I went basketball. Back, <laughs> I'm like, yo, if I went back to 91, so I'll be cracking niggas' heads with bars, bro. You bugging. What's 91? If you go back in the 80s, you play a little baby. Nah, if I go back in the 80s, nigga, I, I, I would end up, niggas would end up, like, probably assassinating me. I'd be too big. You would be like a witch in the fucking I'd be too, Yeah, nah, niggas, niggas would know. I'm like, like, niggas would know something wrong. they like, nah, nah, nah. He got the Niggas call. talking about He got the <laughs> bro. We said, well, walking down the street, shooting hoops, playing ball. <laughs> and then you come out with, I don't trust none of y'all niggas. You're disgusting. The niggas, they not going to get it. He they said, get it. did he call a nigga? A nigga on a son? Oh, oh, shit. You can do that? Did he say that? Nah, you can't. <laughs> Hold on. You can do that? Nigga, look at his manager. Yo, can we do that? Is that, is that like... So wait, well, why can he do Literally, it? Literally, the parental advisory board wasn't created until NWA. They started it. Yeah, no, it would have been created because of me, nigga. I'm telling yeah, you. That's what I'm saying. So I went back. They could have said that back then. I would have mentioned scaring in a song once, and them niggas would have said, oh, oh, okay, all right. Hey, listen, listen. What's what's the, what's the, uh, what's her name? Tipper, uh, Tipper Gore? <laughs> the white lady that was fucking, uh, who was leading that charge against that shit was swearing. This shit is so nasty and i'm like yo listen man this nigga clinton out here getting blowjobs under the table yo and you talking about the music that nigga the president bro me for one i don't think either are nasty yeah it's not nasty but he the president cheating on his wife in the fucking oval office that tact. ain't got nothing to do with me now he gotta have a lot more tact nigga fuck a little more so you don't think as the president you be getting top if you're not married i don't want to cheat on my wife but oh if, if you're i'm not married president, you're not okay. even top yeah, well, listen, if I'm not man, I might have a whole blacklist of women I'm gonna have to pay off. Exactly. Because think about it, like at all, especially if you suddenly them. become president, right? Like, because you suddenly become president, <laughs> nigga, you get thrown into the presidency. And, and you press, it's like that fucking Disney show of my stepbrother Derek or whatever. Or no, Phil <laughs> in the future. <laughs> you just suddenly <laughs> wake up with president. You don't know. Why. <laughs> you just wake up. He said, "Your role, Mr. President." He's Oh, what the fuck? He said, we have a car out you for outside. Oh, hold up. Oh, okay, yeah. Give me a second. Let me. Come on. Can you sit in my. Mm. Nigga said, give me a second. I got to wash my ass, bro. Damn. I just woke you up. did that last night, Mr. President. I want to do it again. Y wait, wait, wait. You said, y'all did that? <laughs> he said, we took care of that, sir. When did y'all wash me? But now nah, that should be. A like, I'm like, bro. Like, if I'm president and I'm single, nigga, yeah, nah, bro, believe me, nigga, I'm having plenty of women come through to the crib. And I don't think I'd have to really pay them off. I, well, you, you never know, though, because you become president, you'll well, see hey, how quick the niggas will change. I feel like... As long nah, as but you know, know, you can't just be the playboy president power. that's out here just boinking, shorties. Like, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you what can't... I'm saying, like as long as you're not fucking the way that works, nah, I get you're what you're not saying. in your position of power. Yeah, no, no, I get you, it. As long as you're not... Anybody but, you want it, I think. But everybody, it's going to eventually come in, right? Because you're going to you're gonna get something good, right? And then you're going to realize, you know what? I should probably help her out. Wrong. Nope. 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 Wrong. Nope. Eh. Now you now you hemmed up, nigga. Now you caught up that MP3, Usher verse, nigga. You're done for. I feel like... No, no. I feel like if there was a single president... He would have his Secret Service have people sign documents before they pulled up, so they they were still the NDAs. And if they said anything, they were taken to like a Blackwater site. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I have like a shell company there. I'm like, look, all right, we're gonna yeah. donate money to you through the shell company. Do the boop, 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 boop. We're gonna put this in so and so name. When you go to the bank, you present that ID. Boop, boop. We gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a whole ring. I'm like, nigga, you was forging IDs for all this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, y'all gonna find out eventually anyway, but. Shit, I gotta do my due diligence. 
What does it matter if they find out? It's not like Clinton cheated. No, nah, I know. Intern, you got, bro, you understand that when you're the president, bro, they be on your dick, like for anything, person. bro. Yeah, especially as a black person, so don't let you be a black dude. And, and bro, don't let it be yeah, one man. white woman and them women. Ooh. Don't let it be. One. Don't you, don't you, fucking dare get caught talking not that white woman. Don't you, because uh, now everybody on your ass. Oh mm. boy, the racist. They send the death threats. They sent it death threats and the they niggas they mad too. Oh no, but believe me, nigga, these death threats. Oh, they they getting they rapid they now. Like they call them niggas is called niggas not even hide. They not even they not even hiding their IP addresses no more. He said, "Come find me, nigga. Come find me, nigga. I'm sick of this shit. Come find me, nigga. You know it. it's that uh the Desi Bank shit. Come to the street, huh? I beat your motherfucking ass." <laughs> He'd just rather be at Guantanamo Bay and not seeing no news than continually seeing. Yeah, news I'm, I'm sick of dealing with it, yo. I'm sick of dealing. He gets dealing with some white girl and then he gonna call her a bunny? Nah, nah, nah. It's over. It's over. It's over. Send me to Gitmo, nigga. But yeah, nah. So you know how they be tripping over anything? You, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Like think about all the nation, like uh, talking about your snow bunny princess. Oh no, nah, nah, nah. See, you doing shit like that, you you begging. You begging, boy. Yeah, you opened the door when you said bunny. You I know, but door. once you once you if you embrace that nigga, you're bugging, nigga. You, your secret service gonna get you hemmed up. Uh, what if that nigga it's, it's is, gonna be a mold on that the nigga inside. was getting a win a white woman? He was just trolling and he just keep going with it because he like Trump. Trump was just trolling his whole presidency. <laughs> just, that nigga just or they see you what to do, yo. It's apparently you snuck a guy out. He was just like, what you know what that him? was. You like you know what that was my cousin, but I'm gonna just act like it wasn't. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna just act like yeah. oh, my cousin was bringing some bud to me, but you know what? I'm gonna act like it was something else. Yeah, my fellow. Yeah, Americans, mind your business, man. You nah, y'all need to mind. American enter my room. I fucked the shit out of that nigga. What about <laughs> it? He said, uh, "And America needed a strong piping, and apparently he did as well." I'm mad at both of our president voices are Obama because I mean I could do a Clinton, but. I mean, Obama's the last real, last real president we had, so you know. Well, actually, remember, China. Obama never. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do a Trump. I'm gonna do a Trump president. He said China. <laughs> oh man! I wish we had cans on because I did the fingers with it. Yeah, China. now you got to. No, I've never <laughs> said it like that and not done the fingers. Like if you say China regularly, you just you don't need the fingers. But if you say China, like if you say China, <laughs> you have to do the fingers. Oh. <laughs> But I always think <laughs> you doing it. I know you did. I always think about um all like the time he finished it where he slowly uh, oh yeah um yeah <laughs> China. <laughs> I always think about the things that a president like think about the things that a president can't do like mundane, regular, everyday. Like you said, if you a single president, you just can't fuck off. You can't just be out here just slinging it. You can't you be in the club, club. <laughs> right? You can't go to you can't go to a club. Can't even go to the club. You can't be on Tinder. You can't find bitches nowhere. You can't even pop in. You can't even pop into the club. So look at this in this horrorish establishment. I'm like, bro, this shit is down the street from Congress. What are you talking about? It's up the block. I can see my crib from here. I can walk home. What do y'all? What do y'all mean? Come on, something in a bad establishment, nigga. I live here. This is my establishment. If it's bad, what the hell you say about me? See, bro, I got 18 Secret Service niggas in here, bro. How can it still be bad after that? Maybe it was before then, but you, you telling me the nigga with the strap set saw all 18 server, Secret Service niggas and said, mm, I'm still take, taking my shot. I could take my shot, yeah. All I need to do is get him. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, bro. And there's two niggas standing in front of me. But like, you he can't do it. Like, like, them niggas armpits. Like, I'm thinking, like, all right, what else can't you do? You can't. Um, I mean, you can't do no drugs like openly, right? Like you can't like yeah. even if it's some regular shit. Even marijuana, no, you can't be high. Like, right? like even if niggas is fine, like you like yeah, you know, every once in a while, I just like you know, pop like half a tab of some zannies and shit. Just go to you sleep. can't smoke cigarettes, but you can smoke. Well, no, no, zannies. I feel like presidents are probably subscribed. Oh yeah, nah, you might anxiety. anxiety. But it's also the same thing where that's the type of shit niggas be trying to hide. Because you see a lot of presidents throughout history, nigga, they went to outlandish lengths to hide from the public. Yeah, FDR yeah, tried like, to hide the fact that that nigga couldn't walk. 
Well, I mean, that makes sense, motherfucker. I can't walk. Like, I don't want the country. They're going to look at me like, look at this cripple. He knows how they was looking at him. That's insane. He know how nasty he was. How nasty was America in the 30s, nigga? No, you said FDR. No, no. Wait, no, Roosevelt. Not FDR. Come on, Teddy. Teddy, yeah, Roosevelt. Yeah, that's way before that. But think about how nasty. Nigga, you know what the how they was talking about foreigners at that time. No, 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 no. I know how that's what the disabled niggas bro, mm. the, the, the strongest nigga in the world. You can change yeah. the strongest nation uh, and you can and you disabled they nigga, they can't stand it. Oh, niggas' that brains will explode. Insane, yo. Niggas just <laughs> that's fucking crazy to think about, yeah. But mind yeah. you, then you had some other niggas who was literally just hiding. I'm I got sleep apnea. I'm like, I don't care. Why would you hide how that? How would we even know that? We yeah, know. He, he was on a medication. He hid the medication for years. Nigga, I don't give a fuck. Why was you hiding this? Sleep apnea. Nigga, like, I care. I feel like a president can smoke cigars, but they can't smoke cigarettes. Well, I don't like cigars or cigarettes. I'm not smoking a cig ever, first off. I, like, even if they were like, this is yeah, the yeah, you've been through it. Your pristine, pussy pink lungs can't handle a menthol cigarette. Cigars are worse than cigarettes, and I smoke. You don't inhale cigars. You just switch okay, when you up. smoke backwards. When you smoke backwards, the wrap is a cigar. Wrap. It's not. It's not the same as a cigar. It's not I know, same. but over time it is. <laughs> over time, it's worse than a cig. Yeah, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about what the president can and can't do. Right, and the president. Oh, okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, the president. Well, look, niggas I, you look at the president. No, no, no. I'm banning future presidents from smoking six. First day and all. First off, first day right now. You're not gonna shit about it. I said future president, bitch. You ain't gonna be no future. <laughs> you do not know that. I'm just now getting into I'm the, the age range. You, I'm gonna president. get sure it ain't you, nigga. I'm just not getting into the age range. You know how, like, you know how, like, when the NBA nigga said they was gonna stop the season, Obama stepped in. That's gonna be me when you try to run. Like, as soon as I get an inkling, just a rumbling. As soon as I get a rumbling and you running, I'm gonna go straight to your crib. You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do some nasty shit. You know what I'm gonna do? You gonna have made some, you know, no, 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 no. You gonna have made some ribs that weekend on the grill, right? Slab, nice little joints. I'm gonna replace them with some pork ribs. No one is gonna fuck your belly up. Mm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Then what? And then once you go to the bathroom, now I got you trapped. I crawl in through the air vent, and now you got to hear me, nigga. I don't have an air vent in my bathroom. Oh, you don't think you got one, nigga? You but I'm the president. You forgetting, bro? You forgetting? How the fuck are you the president? You stopping me from becoming president? No, at this point, I would have been the one before you, and you'd be the nigga after me. I'm just hey, I don't want you to be, Make bro. You can be a senator. Go be a senator. You can't be no, president, bro. I did that. Be. It's been my dream since. You just gonna undo my, my shit. President. You're going to destroy my legacy, yo. You're going to fuck my legacy. You're going to get in there from day one talking about some squirtish pee. You're going to fuck my legacy up. <laughs> oh, that's going to be the first thing I say. Like, exactly. you going to do that. president, it would be as a fucking joke. Nigga going to replace all the art the with, 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 with... He going to replace all the art with JoJo art. Like, <laughs> yeah, like my room. <laughs> I will get... My first act as president, when I'm speaking at the fucking reflective pool... With all the people in the crowd, I'm here to tell everybody today, squirt is pee. And I drop the mic and just walk away. And that's you. Oh, oh, yeah. Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> yes, one question. Yes, Mr. President. What did you mean by that? Nigga just shake his head and walk off. <laughs> that meant exactly what I said. Yeah, <laughs> how about I say? Clearly, this country isn't ready for a man as of my nature. And nigga walk off into the sunset. He don't, he, don't, he don't even come back. <laughs> and then a day later, Congress has already prepared a fucking uh... articles of impeachment. He <laughs> said he has threatened national security by <laughs> releasing our secret. <laughs> oh, so you guys are admitting this word is P. You're you're saying I'm releasing secrets. You're admitting it. Yeah, well, listen, the secret's out at this point, and because of that reason, he must be tried for treason. For treason. And then Ain't I ended up in Guantanamo Bay a day after being president just for saying squirt is pee. That's all I did. I just said squirt was pee. It's cool though. Remember, I'm in the president for you. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come bail you out. I got you, bro. You're gonna be you gonna be my party. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't be the president still at that point. Oh, wait, no, no, you're gonna be the president again. You're you gonna run again like Trump. Gonna be the president again. Again. <laughs> you said like Trump gonna run again. Yo, stop playing with me. <laughs> Nah, Trump gonna run again, yo. Niggas think we should again. He's not gonna live long enough. 
Because I don't know. I don't know if he runs in this current race. And if he don't run in this current race, he's not going to live long enough. No, I'm thinking he's going to run this current race. I don't think he's going to live long enough past this current race, but I think he's going to run in this current race. I, I just don't see it. Why I think, not? He's still going to attract him with his people. Because I think Trump got in. He did his four years. He got the grift off as best as he could. He made all the money he could, all the connections he could. And I think now he's probably a lot happier now where he is than he was. He don't have to deal with all the you know, Yeah, exactly. Because you got to understand, he's a fucking dummy. If you're a dummy, That's what's true. good for a dummy? A, I don't got to deal with other dummies? Now, as a dummy, That's I can true. avoid other stupid niggas by just... Think about it. I'm banned from Twitter, so niggas really don't even hear from me. So everything I do, I don't... I, I'm, it's an echo chamber. I'm only hearing the niggas who fuck with me now. As it opposed to before. Still drifting because his niggas are paying for those rallies. That he yeah, had. yeah. And, it, so and he's... Not free. Impact is still there. So you got to understand, like, he gets to... His ego getting the same thing. He's He getting gets to money. do the same thing from a... Yeah. Not, obviously not as president, but as a former president. So, I mean, that still carries an immense amount of steam. And... You don't got to deal with national media barking because they they're not paying attention to you anymore because you don't you're not the story anymore, right? So it's like that's to a nigga like him, I would think that's so much more better, bro. You did it, bro. You did it. You we did four years. You got the grip. You set up. You set your whole shit up for life. When you die, the niggas after you got the the, the they got the keys to turn this shit into a trillion dollar empire. You get what I'm saying? Like you set the shit up, nigga. You were a former president on top of being a nigga who turned a million dollar loan into billions, like. You were already a billionaire. And then you became president. And then you be realized, oh, I can just, the scamming I've been doing my whole life, I could, oh, oh wait a minute. I used to drift down to my kids. Like, my daddy did. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't know the presidents because I, I didn't know they could steal like this. He said, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, I, listen, I was stealing before, but nigga, I could flaunt the stealing now. I could just be like, yeah, I can just steal out of the open. I can just openly manipulate the stock market. Yeah, you know what? Kodak, they making the vaccine. Kodak jump up from $7 to $49. Are they really? Uh, hold on, give it a second. You cashed out? Yeah, you cashed out. Nah, they're not. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, about 700,000 shares of fucking uh, Kodak. And it went from $7 to $49. Nigga cashed out every single share and then that shit plummeted again. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. So, like, I think he's having a much better. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously, you can't make the big plays like that because the, all eyes aren't on you. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you can't make the, like, like you say, you can't make that play. But think about it because you were there for four years making those plays, you set up the network. You don't have to be there no more. Now I can make yeah. all my big plays behind the scenes because niggas know who I am. I'm a former president. Like, nigga. You know what type of stain I got. You know this country still, uh, nigga. Eight. It's still rocking with it. What was the number of people that voted for Trump? It was some stupid ass number, like eighty-five million or some shit like that. Yeah. Right. Like, 80, like you know, eighty-five million people here wanted this nigga. And think about it. After seeing what happened with Joe Biden, I would argue that number might be a little higher now, right? Because there's probably a lot of niggas who saw Joe Biden. They're like, bro, you're doing the same thing Trump did, except you're bad at it. Like, Trump was bad at being a president. You're just bad at whatever you're trying to do. I don't know what it is. Like, you're a career politician, so I don't understand why you're bad at it. But it, it's not making sense. Like, this guy was a rookie who was just an asshole. It makes sense why he was bad. <laughs> like, it made perfect sense. He was just a guy who shouldn't have been here, who ran up against an opponent who pretty much said, oh, no, I'll cook, I'll cook this guy. I don't even got to take him serious. What, what you mean we lost? Yeah. Huh? How? How we lose? How y'all let us lose? I was like, we let I we I let y'all lose. Okay. Okay. Well, you was the nigga who said you ain't wanna watch, you ain't wanna watch nothing. You ain't wanna see nothing, you ain't wanna read nothing. So yeah, no, I mean I, I, I to me it just don't make sense for him to run again. Like no, because sure. why would he subject himself to the dog shit again? Again, especially knowing like, all right, you're on your way out. You got the ultimate grip, the grift of a lifetime, the U.S. presidency, the grift of a fucking millennia, of a century, of a whatever you want. Nigga, the grift of a lifetime. I'm good. I'm good. I don't got to double dip because now all the connections I made, nigga, I'm dipping constantly. I'm, st- I'm stay dipping, nigga. I'm good. So it, I wouldn't. I damn sure wouldn't. Even as a greedy nigga, I wouldn't. I would pop out when I want to, but I'm nah. Even as a greedy nigga, I'd be like, nah, it ain't worth it. This shit ain't worth it. That presidency's never worth it. 
But I'm gonna still when I do it because yeah, yeah. I'm gonna change everything. Nah, day one, real shit. Like I'm gonna make it. Um, they go no square to speed. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna right? make it tough for cigarette smokers. Day one, yo. Day Why one, are you like, trying that? It's just not working, obviously. And ain't no trying shit. I'm finna do it, nigga. That's the difference between me and these other niggas. I don't think you understand the way this country works. Oh, I do, because I saw how it was run for four years under some one of these other niggas. And I see we got a nigga here who acting like he can't do that. So me? Nah, I ain't that nigga. You gonna do the Trump, bro. You gonna executive order cigarettes away. Nah, not the cigarettes away. I get. It. I know I can't tell y'all to stop smoking because you know it's an addiction. They they did this to y'all, right? But at some point or another, got to make it hard on y'all. I got to make it. I got to draw a line. We got to make it very clear in this country that we stand for certain things here. And sm- and smoking cigarettes can't be one of them. You can smoke weed. Fuck, fuck shit. You can smoke dope. I don't care what else you smoke. Don't smoke no shit. You know, I stopped smoking cigarettes. I'm about to start smoking again. Mm-mm-mm. I haven't had a cigarette in like years. I don't even remember last time I had a cigarette. I don't remember the first last time. I, I don't even shit. I can't think of the last time I had a cigarette either. It was had to be like at least two thousand college, maybe. I was probably way back twenty thirteen, maybe twenty fourteen, fifteen, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. But all right, man. I'm ready to get the fuck on out of here, baby. Yeah, some Jamaican food is calling my name. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Mm-hmm. It's been real. It's been nice. Y'all be easy, man. Uh, Don't forget. Joe Biden still ain't forget those student loans. And, uh... Also, so y'all be easy. Is there anything uh, my co-host would like to say? I've dropped out of college, so I ain't got no student loans. Y'all be easy, though. And squirt is pee.